Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is the podcast where I say all the stuff, and if you like it, I hope that you will write me a review on Apple Podcasts and lots of other podcast platforms. I love seeing those reviews. I want to get up all up in those charts. Sometimes I'm like, you're number 385 in the education podcasts in Fiji. I'm like, hey, that's cool, but I want to be number 302. Okay, the first word is charge, second form, verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. 1A is archaic, to lay or put a load on or in. Synonym is load. Uh, Okay, 1B1, to place a charge in. And there is uh, some parentheses. To place a charge, oh boy, I just had some water, so I'm, I'm burping. To place a charge as of powder in so that's uh similar to the thing that we read in the last episode which was something about a bomb a charge and a bomb or something like that um next is 1b2 to load or fill to capacity 1c1 to restore the active materials in by the passage of a direct current through in the opposite direction to that of discharge and the example that you're putting this stuff in is a storage battery 1C2. It's so hard to figure out what this 2 is in reference to, but yes, I think it's 1C2. To give an electric charge to, as in charge a capacitor. 1D1. To assume as a heraldic bearing. 1D2. To place a heraldic bearing on. 1E. To fill or furnish fully, as in the music is charged with excitement. 1F, synonym is the number two definition for the word electrify, as in, the crowd was charged by her performance. 2A, to impose a task or responsibility on, as in, charge him with the job of finding a new meeting place. That's his responsibility. 2B, to command, instruct, or exhort with authority, as in, I charge you not to go. And that word exhort is E-X-H-O-R-T, just like it sounds, exhort. Where are we? 2C is talking about a judge. To give a charge to, and then in parentheses it says a jury. To give a charge to a jury. He has charged them with making a decision quickly. 3A, to make an assertion against, especially by ascribing guilt or blame, as in charges him with armed robbery also is in they were charged as being instigators 3b to place the guilt or blame for as in charge her failure to negligence 3c to assert as in accuse as an accusation that was hard to say to assert as an accusation as in charges that he distorted the data Why did he distort the data? That is the question. 4A, to bring into position for attack. Synonym is level. As in, charge a lance. Okay, level, that seems weird to me. Um, By the way, the the thing that you were bringing, to bring into position, you're bringing, uh, one example is a weapon. And I think a lance is a weapon. So to bring a weapon into position for attack, you're charging it. It's ready to go. 4B, to rush against, synonym is attack, and then also to rush into, usually illegally, in various sports. And then the example that you are, what are you rushing into? Possibly your opponent in your sport that you are playing. 5A1, to impose a financial burden on, as in charge his estate with debts incurred. 5A2, To impose or record as financial obligation, as in charge debts to an estate. 5B1. To fix or ask as fee or payment, as in charges $50 for an office visit. That's an expensive office visit. Uh, 5B2. To ask payment of, and then the uh, example of who you are asking payment of is a person, As in, charge a client for expenses. 5C, 
to record as an expense, debt, obligation, or liability. And the example of what you are recording is an item. To record an item as an expense, debt, obligation, or liability. As in, charged a new sofa. Those were the transitive definitions. Now we have a few intransitive definitions. One, to rush forward in or as if in assault. Synonym is attack. Also, to charge an opponent in sports. Two, to ask or set a price. As in, do you charge for this service? Because I hope you don't, because I like things to be free, so please don't charge for this service so I can get it for free. But, you know, that's not how it works. Number three, to charge an item to an account, as in, charge now, pay later. And then finally, we have a synonym for everything. It is the word command. This is from the Latin, lower Latin, caricare, which is of Latin, or from Latin, carus, which means wheeled vehicle. Why did the word charge come from wheeled vehicle? I don't know. Okay, we are now moving on to chargeable adjective from the 14th century. Number one is archaic. Financially burdensome. Synonym is expensive. Two, liable to be charged as A, liable to be accused or held responsible. And to B, Suitable to be charged to a particular account. And also to see, sorry, I thought that was the last one for some reason. To see, qualified to be made a charge on the country or parish. County. Qualified to be made a charge on the county or parish. That's chargeable. Next is charge account. Two words, noun from 1903. A customer's account with a creditor to which the purchase of goods is charged. And the example of the creditor is a merchant. Next is charge card, noun from 1950, and the synonym is just credit card. Next is charge coupled device. So charge coupled is two words with a hyphen, and then device is its own word, noun from 1971, a semiconductor device that is usually... No, that is used especially as an optical sensor and that stores charge and transfers it sequentially to an amplifier and detector, called also CCD or charged coupled device with no hyphen. And uh, yeah, we, we must have read CCD a while ago. Next is charged, charged, charge with a D at the end, adjective from 1934, one Possessing or showing strong emotion, as in, attacked the author in a highly charged review. Two, capable of arousing strong emotion, as in, a politically charged subject. And then also the synonym, exciting, as in, a highly charged palette of bold colors. This word is so versatile, charge, and various forms of it. Okay, next we have a French phrase or French word, it is charge de fer, charge de fer, char, yeah, yeah, I think that's it, charge de fer. The first word is charge with an accent on the E, and then the second word is de fer, D, apostrophe, A-F-F-A-I-R-E-S, charge de fer, noun from 1767, one, a subordinate diplomat who substitutes for an absent ambassador or minister. Number two, a diplomat inferior in rank to an ambassador or minister who heads a mission when no ambassador or minister is assigned. This is French, and it literally means one charged with affairs. So, you know, usually it's somebody else, like this diplomat or minister, ambassador, whoever, Um, but then... Somebody else is charged with doing that thing, so they are charge d'affaire. Next is charge hand, one word, noun from 1916. It is British, and the synonym is foreman. It's He's the charge hand. He or she is the charge hand. They have charge in their hand. They can do whatever they want. Next is charge off, two words, transitive verb from 1892. To treat as a loss or expense. 
and charge off with a hyphen is a noun. Next, we have charge of quarters, three words from circa 1918, an enlisted man designated to handle administrative matters in a unit, especially after duty hours, and it is abbreviated to CQ. Next and last word for this episode is charger. We've got two forms. The first form is a noun from the 14th century, a large flat dish or platter. Call that a charger? I never heard that, but I don't know my dishes. All right, and the second form is charger, noun from 1539, one, one that charges as 1A, an appliance for holding or inserting a charge of powder or shot in a gun. 1B, a cartridge clip, that's that, <laughs> I, thought there went, I thought it went on to the next line, but no, a cartridge clip. And 1C, again, there's a two, why, why do you keep on, uh, anyway, 1C, a device for charging storage batteries, and 2, a horse for battle or parade. Maybe because you charge things on a horse, so they call it a charger. Okay, so we had charge, chargeable, charge account, charge card, charge couple device, charged, charge de fer, charge hand, charge off, charge of quarters, charger, and charger. I don't know about you, but charge sounds super weird now. Uh, let's see. Mm, what am I going to pick? What am I going to pick? Um, let's see. Uh, it's, if it is, you know, there's lots of, lots of variations of the word charge. Um, I don't know. Charge de fer. I'll pick that one just because it's a fun French word to say. Charge de fer, charge de fer, charge de fer. Okay, today is May 10th. It is the 28th day of Ramadan. In Canada, it is National Denim Day. In Israel, it is Yom Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. In France, it is Annual Slavery Remembrance Day. In Mexico, it is Mother's Day. In Bolivia, it is National Journalist Day. In Venezuela, it is National Artist Day. I like that. It is also I am right on the on the I'm I'm on the right day. Um in North Carolina and South Carolina, eh, it's Confederate Memorial Day. I'm not sure how much I like that, but that's going on. In Micronesia, it is Constitution Day. In Promontory, Utah, it is Golden Spike Day. I think that is uh probably when they were building the railroad from two different sides, and then when they met up. They put a golden spike in the middle, and I think later it got stolen. So maybe in Promontory, Utah, that's where they put the golden spike, I'm guessing. Um, and then what What other, What fun holidays do we have today? It is National Shrimp Day, so go be nice to some shrimp. And it's also National Clean Your Room Day, so go clean your room once a year. All right, that's all we got to say today. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Today is May 11th. Let's talk about our first word. It is cheriness. I think that's how you say it. Cheriness. C H A R I N E S S. Noun from 1571. One, the quality or state of being cherry. And a synonym is caution. When will we see this word cherry? Cherry, cherry, it, it will be on um, May 14th. Uh, number two, carefully preserved state. Synonym is integrity. <coughs> Why do I sneeze every single time I record these days? Am I allergic to my bedroom? It's entirely possible. Okay, but I'm not allergic to sleep. I know that. Okay, next is chariot. First form, chariot, chariot. Noun from the 14th century. One, a light four-wheeled pleasure or state carriage. Two, a two-wheeled horse-drawn battle car of ancient times, also used in processions and races. Of course, there's that famous chariot race scene in Ben-Hur. I think there's there are a couple versions of that movie. 
I don't remember. Uh, I've never seen it. Okay, what's the etymology say? Uh, from Old French, charriar, to transport. From char, which means vehicle, from the Latin carus, and there's more at the word car. Second form of chariot is a verb from 1550. The intransitive definition says to drive or ride in or as if in a chariot. Transitive, to carry in or as if in a, a chariot. It's not a chariot, it's a chariot. Next is charioteer, noun from the 14th century. Uh, usually these would just be thrown at the end of the word chariot and it would say charioteer is a noun, but no, it gets its own thing. Um, one, one who drives a chariot. Two, it would be capitalized, and we have the synonym auriga, A-U-R-I-G-A. I don't remember what that means. Auriga. Next, we have charism. Starts with a C-H, obviously. Noun, oh, and the plural is charismata, or just charisms. This is a noun from circa 1641, an extraordinary power, as of healing, given a Christian by the Holy Spirit for the good of the church. So the Holy Spirit gives a person extraordinary power, like healing, and it's all for the good of the church, because everything we got to do is for the good of the church. Um, oh, it's from the Greek charisma, which is our actually actually our next word. Uh, what 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 other powers would would charism give you? I don't know. Let's talk about charisma. Noun from 1930. One, a personal magic, a personal magic of leadership arousing special popular loyalty or enthusiasm for a public figure. And the example is a, p a political leader. Two, a special magnetic charm or appeal, as in the charisma of a popular actor. I think it's funny that they oh no did i say magic it's a special magnetic charm yes that makes more sense um this is from greek charisma which means favor or gift from charis charis thigh which means to favor uh from charis which means grace akin to the greek word caring which means to rejoice and there's more at the word yearn y-e-a-r-n um yes Charisma is a good thing to have. Next is charismatic. First form. I think that, that reminds me of like old appliances. It would always be like this something omatic. So what would that be? A charismatic machine in the kitchen. Uh, this is an adjective from circa 1868. One of relating to or constituting charisma or charism as in charismatic gifts. Number two, having, exhibiting, or based on charisma or charism, as in charismatic sects. That's S-E-C-T-S, -E like groups. Also is in a charismatic leader. I had no idea about this word charism, and now it's showing up in a few of these things. Next we have <clears throat> the second form of charismatic noun from 1951, a member of a religious group or movement that stresses the seeking of direct divine inspiration and charisms. And the examples are glossolalia or healing. Is glossolalia a, a, a charism, a power, a, a group, an inspiration? What is that? Glossolalia. All right, next we have charitable. Adjective from the 14th century. One, full of love for and goodwill toward others. Synonym is benevolent. This is excellent. 2A, liberal in benefactions to the needy. Synonym is generous. 2B, of or relating to charity, as in charitable institutions. 3, merciful or kind in judging others. Synonym is lenient. Charitableness is a noun, and charitably is an adverb. Uh, next is charity. Charity, charity. Noun from the 13th century. One, benevolent goodwill toward or love of humanity. 2A, generosity and helpfulness, especially toward the needy or suffering. Also, aid given to those in need. 2B, 
an institution engaged in relief of the poor. 2C, public provision for the relief of the needy. 3A, a gift for public benevolent purposes. 3B, an institution founded by such a gift. And the example of this institution is a hospital. 4. Lenient judgment of others. And then a synonym for all is the word mercy. Uh, let's see. This is from the Latin caritas, lower Latin, which means Christian love. Uh, also from the Latin word, which means dearness. From carus, which means dear. Akin, that's D-E-A-R. Akin to the old Irish carai, which means friend. And the Sanskrit word kama, with a K, or kama which means love. This is excellent. Excellent, excellent. We need more of it. Next is chivalry. I think that's how you would pronounce it. Chivalry or chivalry or chivalry. C-H-A-R-I-V-A-R-I. Chivalry. That is not how I would want to say it. This is a noun from circa 1681. Oh, look at that. We have this synonym, chivalry, spelled S-H-I-V-A-R-E-E. That one makes more sense to me. Uh, This is French, perhaps, from the lower Latin caribaria, which means headache, from the Greek caribaria, which is from cara or cari, which means head, plus baris, which means heavy, heavy, head, headache. Yes, it all makes sense. And there's more at the words cerebral and grieve. So we sort of get an idea of what this is. Next is charlatan. Noun from 1618. Number one. The synonym is the number two definition for the word quack. Quack, quack. Two. One making usually showy pretenses to knowledge or ability. Synonyms are fraud and faker. If you are called a charlatan, that is not a good thing. Maybe you should change your ways. Uh, charlatanism is a noun. A charlatan practices charlatanism. And charla... What is this word? Charlatantry. Charlantantry? Char- charlatanry. There we go. Charlatanry is a noun. Uh, this is from the Italian, wor- Italian word uh, char- charlatano or charlatano. Uh, it's an alternative of caretano, which literally means inhabitant of Careto or Careto, uh, which is Careto, Italy. So <laughs> maybe all the people of Careto, Italy are frauds and quacks and fakers. That's that's not, I'm sure that's not the case, but you know, for some reason it came from there. I want to know what that story is. Next, we have Charles's Wayne. Charles, like the name Charles with an apostrophe S, so it's his Wayne, and then Wayne is capital W-A-I-N. Noun from before the 12th century, the synonym is Big Dipper. I assume that's talking about the constellation in the sky. Uh, and this is named after Charlemagne. So maybe he saw it and thought that it should be named after him. And our last word is Charleston, capital C-H-A-R-L-E-S-T-O-N, Charleston. Uh, It is a noun from 1925, a lively ballroom dance in which the knees are twisted in and out and the heels are swung sharply outward on each step. Charleston, Charleston, that's how this song goes, I think. Uh, Yeah, Uh, you know, this is just a fun dance that the kids like to do because we don't really know how to do it and it's just a funny move. So, yeah, Um, it is from Charleston, South Carolina. So that's where the dance was invented, I'm going to guess. Okay, so the words were cheriness, chariot, charioteer, charism, charisma, charismatic, charitable, charity, chivalry, charlatan, Charles's Wayne, and Charleston. Well, I think I'm going to pick charity as the word of the episode because it is just a very good thing that we all need to do more of. If you can, in some way, just help other people. That is all I got to say about that. So let's talk about the holidays. Today it is in the U.S. Maybe this is going to be in the fun holiday list as well, but I'm going to say it here. Eat what you want day. So just eat what you want, Uh, you know, within reason. It is the 29th day of Ramadan 
In India, it is National Technology Day. In Belarus, it is Radonista, Radonitsa. And in Argentina, it is National Anthem Day. What else? What does this website have to say to me? It is a Vietnam Human, Vietnam Human Rights Day. And in Minnesota, it is Statehood Day. And what else? Yes, National Eat What You Want Day. It's National Third Shift Workers Day. They're usually, you know, working the overnight shift, the graveyard shift. They need some respect. Maybe they can get the day off. It's also National Twilight Zone Day. I wonder why it was picked today. Was this like the first day that it aired? Uh, We are celebrating more science fiction, horror, supernatural drama, and unexpected twists. Yes, this is great. I recently watched all of the Twilight Zone, the original uh, five thing. It's five seasons. And uh, it is so good and interesting. And I think you all should watch it. Um, Doesn't say why it's on May 11th. I think, yeah, maybe it did debut on this day. Anyway, we don't need to talk about that. This is the end of the episode where we end this episode. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, we're nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary Podcast. It's just called the Dictionary. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at DictionaryPod. Uh, Email me at DictionaryPod at gmail.com. There is a Google voice number in the show notes. If you would like to call and leave me a voicemail, I'd like to hear it. And maybe I shall play it on an episode if it is appropriate. And you can rate and review this and become a patron. And when you give me money, you will get things from this show. You will get early episodes and possibly exclusives. And then I will turn around and donate that money to another Patreon so I can get bonus from them. That's how this all works. I am not making money on this. So our first word is Charlie Horse. Two words. Charlie, spelled C-H-A-R-L-E-Y. Noun from 1888. A muscular pain, cramping, or stiffness, especially of the quadriceps, that results from a strain or bruise. These things suck. Uh, They can also happen, like, in your foot. Ooh, I I just started to get one, actually, moving my toes around. Why did I do that? Okay, this is from Charlie, which is a nickname for Charles, but that's all it says. Who, why, was the first person to get one of these named Charles? But his nickname was Charlie. It doesn't make no sense. Okay, next we have Charlie, spelled with an I-E or an E-Y. It is a noun often capitalized from circa 1946. It is British, and it just means fool. That is the synonym. Fool. Charlie. Charlie. And it's from the name Charlie. Which is our next word with a capital C, um, uh, spelled with an I-E, just like the last one we said. First form from 1946, a communications code word for the letter C. What is it? What did they say? Alpha, Bravo, Charlie? I think that's what that is. Second form of Charlie with a capital C is a noun from 1965. Uh, I think this should probably say something like often disparaging or something like that, but it does not. Uh, It is used as a collective name for the Viet Cong during the war in Vietnam. It is short for Victor Charlie, so they just shortened it to Charlie, uh, which is from the communications code words for VC, which was Viet Cong. So Viet Cong became VC, but then like the, the code words were Victor and Charlie, and then they just shortened it to Charlie. Uh, I don't know. I guess technically maybe it's not disparaging, but it seems like they probably didn't use it in a nice way is what I'm guessing. Moving on to Charlock or Charlick. A uh, noun from before the 12th century, an old world mustard that is a common weed in grain fields, called also wild mustard. The scientific name is Brassica caber, caber and also Sinop- Sinopis arvensis. Uh, this is from the Middle English, Cherlock, also the Old English. Well, see, I would pronounce it Serlik, but I'm sure it's pronounced Cherlick or something like that. Next is the word Charlotte. It's the name Charlotte, but it does not have a capital C, so it's just Charlotte. 
noun from 1796, a dessert, ooh, consisting of a filling layered with or placed in a mold lined with strips of bread, lady fingers, or biscuits. And uh, the filling could be fruit, whipped cream, or custard. And this sounds great. Next is Charlotte Russe. So we've now added a second word, Russe, spelled R-U-S-S-E. I am hoping that's uh, how, yeah, that's probably how it's pronounced. This is a noun from 1839. It is a charlotte, the thing that we just talked about, a charlotte made with sponge cake or ladyfingers and a whipped cream or custard gelatin filling. And this is French, and it literally means Russian charlotte. So the French made the charlotte, and then the Russians said, we're going to make our own version. And then the French said, okay, well, we're going to, you know, your name, your the word for Russian is Rus, sort of. So we're calling it a charlotte Rus. Okay, next is charm, C-H-A-R-M. First form noun from the 14th century, 1A. The chanting or reciting of a magic spell. Synonym is incantation. 1B. A practice or expression believed to have magic power. 2. Something worn about the person to ward off evil or ensure good fortune. Synonym is amulet. It's a thing that you can wear around your neck, possibly. 3A. A trait that fascinates, allures, or delights. Maybe if you have this charm uh, trait, you also have charisma. Maybe they're related. Uh, Okay, 3B, a physical grace or attraction that is used in plural, as in her feminine charms. 3C, compelling attractiveness, as in the island possessed great charm. 4, a small ornament worn on a bracelet or chain. Five, a fundamental quark that has an electric charge of plus two thirds and a measured energy of approximately one and a half GeV. Also, the flavor characterizing this particle. Wow, none of that made any sense to me. GeV, by the way, is capital G, lowercase e, capital V. So I don't know if that's some sort of volts or something, but I think I've heard of it. Yes, one of the quarks is called charm. There's like, there's some funky names for those quarks. Um, But yes, one third measured energy of approximately one and a half GeV. Also, the flavor characterizing this particle. I don't know. Uh, I've heard of it, but I don't remember any of it. So this is from the Latin carmen, which means song, from canere, which means to sing. And there's more at the word chant. Next is the second form of charm. It is a verb from the 14th century, starting with transitive. 1A, to affect by or as if by magic. Synonym is compel. 1B, to please, soothe, or delight by compelling attraction, as in charms customers with his suave manner. Maybe that's why I don't have very many listeners, because I'm not charming. 2 to endow with or as if with supernatural powers by means of charms. Also, to protect by or as if by spells, charms, or supernatural influences. Three, to control typically by charms. We have two parentheses in this definition. To control an animal typically by charms, as the plane of music, as in charm a snake. Do, 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 that is a song that we would sing as kids, and I don't know where it came from. Now we have the intransitive definitions. One, to practice magic and enchantment. Two, to have the effect of a charm. A uh, synonym is fascinate, and then another synonym is attract, and charmer is a noun. So I think this is interesting that this basically comes from song, Uh, And then even in one of these, it says enchantment, chant, that's a song, and that's clearly from canary, which is to sing. So a charm is a singing thing, and, you know, maybe if you're singing, you are very charming. I don't know. Oh, maybe that's why I have so many songs in here, because I would like to be charming. I don't know if this makes any sense. Charmer is a noun. That is the one who's doing the charming. Next is charmed, 
with an ed adjective from 1605 one extremely lucky or prosperous as in living a charmed life two of relating to or being a charm quark that's spelled q u a r k quark next is charmed circle two words noun from 1898 a group marked by exclusiveness next is charmeuse or charmeuse or charmeuse or charmeurs so many ways to say this it is spelled c h a r m e u s e i'll say charmeuse noun from 1907 a fine semi-lustrous crepe in satin weave well i think of crepes as being a food but i don't think that's what this is this is french it is the feminine of charmeur which is charmer from charmer which means to charm next is charming adjective from 1634 extremely pleasing or delightful synonym is entrancing as in a charming restaurant charming lee is an adverb and our last word for this episode is charnel 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 c-h-a-r-n-e-l noun from the 14th century it is a building or chamber in which bodies or bones are deposited called also charnel house and charnel is also an adjective this is from anglo-french carnel charnel probably an alternative of charner from middle latin carnarium from the latin caro caro which means flesh and there's more at the word carnal so all the bodies and the bones go in the charnel and uh what is that thing there's the the catacombs i that might be related but it doesn't seem like it so maybe not so we had charlie horse charlie 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 charlock charlotte charlotte Roos, charm charmed charmed circle charmeuse charming and charnel well just because i like desserts i shall pick charlotte as the word of the episode but i do very much like charm charming charm that sort of stuff uh charlotte is a dessert that i would like to eat because it sounds tasty okay i did not switch over these websites so i need to do that real quick we are on may 12th what holidays do we have today oh it's the end of ramadan we have finally reached the end 30th and last day uh finland has the birthday of the statesman johan wilhelm snellman that's his name johan wilhelm snellman it is international nurses day so all over the world the nurses get to celebrate and not work no they do have to work but they deserve some break time in india it is ramzan id or also edul fitar and i apologies for my pronunciation obviously uh okay what else what else do we got going on today it is second amendment day in pennsylvania u.s in finland it is day of the finnish identity um it is international myalgic encephalomyelitis or also chronic fatigue syndrome awareness day so you got to be aware of chronic fatigue syndrome in georgia it is saint andrea the first day and i think that is georgia the country it is national receptionists day that's one of the fun holidays it is also national limerick day so if i were smart i would have come up with a limerick ahead of time but i don't have one ready so sorry about that uh and there's nothing going on this week other than the things that i've already mentioned that's going to be it thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds it's may 13th happy day to you let's talk about the words all right so the first word is at the top of page 209 it is pronounced charolais it is spelled capital c h a r o l a i s charolais noun from 1893 any of a breed of large white cattle developed in france they were developed there uh, developed in france and used primarily for beef and crossbreeding 
Well, this is very appropriate to a podcast episode I just listened to yesterday at the time of recording, you know, which is like a month away, a uh, month previous. But uh, Science Rules is a podcast with Bill Nye, and uh, I just, you know, in the middle of April, early, mid-April, um, they have an episode with the founder of Impossible Meats, this scientist who... The short story is that he really wanted to find what the biggest problem is is in the world and see if, you know, one of the biggest problems and see if he could solve it scientifically. So he tried to tackle climate change and he, you know, realized that the the, the meat industry, the, the cattle industry, the, the growing of foods for... Anyway, it's a huge, huge, huge... Um, wow, this got real political right off the bat, didn't it? Anyway... It's not political because it is affecting the entire world. Climate change is affecting all of us. And the meat industry, the dairy industry, is one of, if not the largest, um, factors in that. Anyway, that is what Impossible Meats is trying to do. They're trying to fix climate change. And making fake meats, quote-unquote fake meats, is a really, really big, important way to do it. And it's also healthier, and it's also more ethical. So it's kind of a win-win-win-win-win-win-win-win, I think. So I'll probably post a link in the show notes uh, to find that episode. But, you know, it's it's called Science Rules, and it's the one where they say something like, meet the inventor, but it's meat, M-E-A-T. Haha, <laughs> get it? Meet the inventor of new meats or something like that. So that was the white cattle developed in France. Uh, it is from Charolais, which is a district in eastern France. Okay, next we have Karen or Caron, capital C-H-A-R-O-N, noun from 1513, a son of Erebus who in Greek mythology ferries the souls of the dead over the Styx. And that is the River Styx. And Styx is spelled S-T-Y-X. And there's a band called Styx. Uh, I knew who this guy was, but I couldn't ever remember his name. Karen. <laughs> He's a Karen. I don't know. Uh, okay, next we've got Charpoy. Char-poy. P-O-Y. Noun from 1845. A bed used especially in India consisting of a frame strung with tapes or light rope. Huh, I'm so curious now to see this, so maybe we'll have to post a picture of this charpoy. It is from the Hindi, karpai, and the Urdu, charpai. You know, obviously I'm not pronouncing those correctly, but I'm sort of just saying how they're kind of spelled in this. Okay, next we have char with two R's. It's a variation of the first form of char with one R. R. Next, we have chart. First form, noun from 1571. One, the synonym is just map. And then it says as, 1A, an outline map exhibiting something as climatic, climatic or magnetic variations in its geographical aspects. An outline map exhibiting something in its geographical aspects. 1B, a map for the use of navigators. Navigators, they need a map, otherwise they don't know how to navigate. 2A, a sheet giving information in tabular form. 2B, the synonym is graph. 2C, the synonym is diagram. 2D, a sheet of paper ruled and graduated for use in a recording instrument. That's a chart. We're talking about chart. 2E, a record of medical information about a patient. Yes, let's let's just look at your chart here. It says that you have two heads and that that is not normal. 2F, a listing by rank and as of sales. You might be ranking sales. And that is usually used in plural, as in number one on the charts. Yay, that's a quote from Tim Cahill. How is that a quote? from a person number one in the chart on the charts number one on the charts that that is such a common phrase i don't think you can designate that as a quote to one person but anyway it claims it's a quote from tim cahill was tim cahill number one on the charts i'm asking you three 
A musical arrangement, also a part in such an arrangement. Uh, this is from Middle French Charte, from the Latin Charta, which is a piece of papyrus, or a document. And there's more at the word card. So it was just, just a piece of paper, and then you could do a whole bunch of things on that paper. Okay, next we have the second form of chart. It's a verb uh, starting with transitive from 1842. One, to lay out a plan for, as in chart a course. The navigator might be charting a course. Two, to make a, to make a map or chart of, as in chart the coastline. Three, the synonym, synonym is chronicle, as in the book charts the last years of his life. Which book was it? Who was it? That's that. Uh, now we have the intransitive. To be ranked on a chart, as in the song charted for three months. Now we have the word charter, first form, noun from the 13th century. One, a written instrument or contract executed in due form. And the example of this contract would be a deed. To a a grant or guarantee of rights, franchises, or privileges from the sovereign power of a state or country. To be a written instrument that creates and defines the franchises of a city, educational institution, or corporation. To see, the synonym is constitution. Three, a written instrument, there's lots of written instruments, a written instrument from the authorities of a society creating a lodge or branch. Four, a special privilege, immunity, or exemption. Five, a mercantile lease of a ship or some principal part of it. And six, a charter travel arrangement. This is from, what is it from? Middle Latin chartula, from a diminutive of the Latin charta. Second form of charter is a verb from the 15th century. It's, I think it's just transitive in this one. 1A, to establish, enable, or convey by charter. 1B is British. The synonym is certify, as in a chartered mechanical engineer. 2. To hire, rent, or lease for usually exclusive and temporary use, as in chartered a boat for deep sea fishing. You can, I, I don't know. There's lots of ways that this word gets used, I'm trying to combine them in something, but I can't do it in my brain. So we have another synonym. It's the word hire. Charterer is a noun. Now, would that be the one who is charting the boat, chartering the boat, or are they the boat owner who gets chartered? Who's the charterer? Uh, now we have the third form of charter adjective from 1922 of relating to or being a travel arrangement in which transportations is hired. Oh, sorry. I thought that there was an S at the end of transportation, but there's not. In which transportation is hired by and for one specific group of people, as in a charter flight. And uh, what is an example of this transportation? It would be a bus or a plane. Although, obviously, we've, we've seen previously it could be a boat. Maybe you can charter a bicycle for a group of people. What else can you charter? That's all I can think of. Next, we have chartered accountant. Two words, noun from 1855. It is British, a member of a chartered institute of accountants. Next is charter member. Two words, noun from circa 1909. An original member of a group. And then we have parentheses as a society or corporation. Charter membership is a noun. The charter member needs the charter membership to be a member of the charter. Next, we have charter school. Two words, noun from 1922. Wow, it's a pretty long definition. A tax-supported school established by a charter between a granting body and an outside group, which operates the school without most local and state educational regulations so as to achieve set goals. And the example of the granting body who is making this happen is a school board. And the examples of the outside group are teachers and parents. So they can do whatever they want. Next and last word is chartism with a capital C, C-H-A-R-T-I-S-M. 
noun from 1839, the principles and practices of a body of 19th century English political reformers advocating better social and industrial conditions for the working classes. And chartist is a noun or an adjective, and that will be also the first word in the next episode, which, by the way, I already recorded, and there is a guest. So it's going to be a longer episode, but we have a fun conversation about that list of words. Uh, I think that was it for, oh, chartism, that yeah, comes from the Latin word document, which we saw before. So, we had today, Charolais, Karen, Charpoy, Char, Chart, Charter, Chartered Accountant, Charter Member, Charter School, and Chartism. Oh, well, so, I think I want to pick, hmm, probably one of, I, I think I shall pick Karen, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Karen, C-H-A-R-O-N, as the word of the episode, because it is the dude in Greek mythology who ferries the souls of the dead over the Styx River. It's just called the Styx, and I just think that's kind of sweet and cool. Okay, so those were all the words, and now it is time for me to read the holidays. It is Ascension in the U.S. and lots of other places. I think that is a religious holiday. It is Aid al Fitr that starts uh, that's in Nigeria I think a couple of different spellings I'm seeing here in Germany it is Father's Day in Singapore it is Hari Raya Puasa that's my waiting music um, also in Rotuma it is Rotuma Day what are the fun holidays we've got a bunch I don't I don't I don't I don't think this list is a full list of fun holidays. That I do not know what that was. Uh, so we have Fair Trade Day. We have National Apple Pie Day. We have National Jug... Jug... What? Jug Fromping Day? No, it's Frog Jumping Day. National Fruit Cocktail Day. Obviously, these are just in the U.S., so maybe your country has its own list of fun holidays, and you can... Tell me what those are. Um, also, it is international, so that's all the countries. International Hummus Day. Hummus? Hummus? How do you say that word? Hummus Day. Oh, we, we love our hummus here in this household, so I may have to get some hummus and put it on my apple pie and then <laughs> mix that with a fruit cocktail because that's a great mix. Um, that's all that this, this for that. That's that. I did not sing a song about Karen. Karen, Karen, wear your mask and take the souls away from the people. I don't know what that was. All right. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, how do I start? I usually say, hello, word nerds. What's up? Um, anyway, uh, we have a guest in this episode. If you could not tell from the title of this episode, we have the wonderful, and I now I, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, Mark Saltveit. Yes, I get you that? got it right. That's Excellent. about a one in 100 occurrence that someone gets my name right. Well, it was pretty obvious to me, but you know, a lot of people are, have terrible pronouncing things. So You're a dictionary I, I geek. Everyone yeah. wants to make me Vietnamese. Salt Viet. Oh, got it, got it. No, Saltvite makes way more yeah, sense. Yeah. Well, so, Mark, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. I am honored to be speaking with you. And Oh, sure, uh, this is fun. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, and go ahead and tell the people about who you are and what you do and uh, whatever plugs you, you want to sure, talk about. Sure, sure. I'm the editor of the Palindromist magazine, uh, which is the world's greatest palindrome magazine. Is and it you the can only find one? It, uh, there's two. Okay, good. I mean, I don't mean to talk trash, but, you know, Sema Games, it's all right. Um, <laughs> and then uh, uh, you can check us out at palindromist.org. So that's like the first part of palindrome, but it just ends with I-S-T instead of E. So palindromist.org. Uh, also, um, I was in a movie recently uh, about the whole palindrome scene. Uh, it's got some stars like Weird Al Yankovic and Danica McKellar and Will Shorts. And it's called The Palindromists. 
plural, and you can check it out at thepalindromists.com. And it's a very fun movie. Very cool. Yeah, well, you know, obviously that is uh, why you're here. Uh, yeah. You know, we're not going to get into palindromes necessarily unless you throw any out there. But, um, you know, for people who are uh, regular listeners, I had Vince Clemente on. He's uh, the director of the movie. And I had heard about him through another podcast. And I was like, well, I got to get this guy on. And then, of course, that led me to you. And then I'm also going to have another one of the palindromists in the documentary on here as well. So look forward to that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So um the 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 world of palindromes are crazy. I've loved them since I was a kid when I learned about them. And oh, I'll I, send you, you some copies of the magazine. I think you'll really enjoy oh, it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, you know, I never I never got into them enough to really make my own or or follow them in any sort of way. But well, I, one I just... of the issues it's it's not nearly as hard to make a palindrome as you think. <laughs> I've actually done a show called Palindrome Fight where we get five comedians and we take audience suggestions and everyone has like 20 minutes to make up a palindrome. Uh, and uh, everyone has always been able to make up a palindrome. Some of them are terrible, right? but they're comedians. So they can be funny about how terrible their palindromes is or come up with really belabored justifications for why it's actually okay to have such a stupid palindrome. Right, or exactly. It, it really means uh, yeah. it's pretty fun. It is fun. Uh, I did try to make one once. I think I mentioned this to Vince uh, after I saw the documentary. I tried to make one, and I think it was actually going in a pretty good direction, but it was getting really, really complicated really quickly. Yeah. And I can't remember where I put it, whether it was on, I think it was on paper. So now I have uh, to go find it and finish it. And if I ever finish it, I'll send it to you. It's hard to finish them, right? It's right. easy for them to keep getting longer and longer <laughs> and then crazier and crazier. That's why I'm not a big fan of the super long palindrome. Some people mm-hmm. think that's really amazing. But, you know, two guys wrote novels where the entire novel was a single palindrome, like 50,000 words. And they're tortured. They're awful. No one has ever read them. I don't even think the guys who wrote them read them. They're painful. Right. You know, it's got to be fun. Yeah. And I'm sure that half of it doesn't even make any sense or or is such a stretch. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's like a tar bag, a slag, a bra, a gimbal, particular addenda. I, you know, it, it's, what, how, how is that in any way fun? It's not. It's not. Yeah. But when you can make it funny, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah, sit on a potato pan, Otis. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the fun, what I love about it, there's no such thing as a potato pan. Nobody, what would a potato pan be? Like you can only cook potatoes in it? Right. It's right. shaped like a potato. It's like an <laughs> egg cup, but it's a potato cookery device. There oh. are so many possibilities, but go sit on it, Otis. Otis. Yeah, but it's a great insult. Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite ones in that Weird Al song, uh, which I know he he pulled a lot of them from different places. Yeah, he but, didn't write those, but he, he assembled them brilliantly. Yeah, he's like the editor. Yeah. Um, but yeah, one of my favorite ones was Go Hang a Salami, I'm a Lasagna Hog. Yeah, that's John Agee. He's in the movie a lot, yeah. actually. He's the only person to ever make money off palindromes. You know, that that's a that's something to strive for. Yeah, he does <laughs> cartoons. I should I should be clear. He's a really gifted cartoonist. Uh, yeah. and he's done. He does other kids' books, which are very popular too. Like my daughters love the John Agee books. Awesome. Uh, the non palindrome. They're kind of sick of palindromes at this point. <laughs> well, <laughs> having you as a dad, I'm sure it's like nonstop, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Oh God, do uh, have to dad. W- well, so obviously everybody should uh, go check out Mark's work. Go to his website. I will put that in the show notes as well. Thank uh, you. Go check out the movie. Follow him on Twitter. We there's all the all the stuff. You can find yeah, all yeah. the stuff. Um, great. Well, let us talk about these words that we have yeah. today. Um, this is airing on May fourteenth. It's a uh, a month from now and more. Five weeks from now. Um, all right. So our first word is chartist c-h-a-r-t-i-s-t uh they they made that movie the artist and now i think they should make a movie called the chartist uh this is a noun from 1919 one any analyst of market action whose predictions of market courses are based on study of graphic presentations of past market performance did that make sense (laughs) yeah i think it's a little um i think it's a little outdated i mean yeah. Usually we would call that person an analyst 
right now mm -hmm. um, because we don't really call our psychotherapist analysts anymore. Um, or the, the, the hip word for it is a quant. Oh. Short for quantitative. I have not heard that. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So if you get serious Wall Street people, they're like, oh, he's a quant, man. Listen to what he says. <laughs> They have all the respect. Have you noticed? Uh, have you noticed that you know we used to make fun of nerds until they started figuring out how to make money, and now all of a sudden it's totally cool to be a nerd. Oh yeah, it's it is very cool to be a nerd. Also, money and uh, making really cool movies and stuff. Well, I think making cool movies has always been cool, but yeah. you know, being being a a, a programmer or a, yeah. a Wall Street quant, those guys make a ton of money. Like math majors are getting vacuumed up by big Wall Street firms. I I will never be one of those nerds, but I am a uh, a tried and true proud nerd. I'm in the nerd verse. Cool. And I, yeah. I think all all my listeners are word nerds, as I like to call them. I, I think pretty safe to say if you're into palindromes, you're a nerd. Oh yeah, totally. Right in a good yeah. way. The we good got we got two nerds here. The fun the fun way. Yes. Um. Okay, so we've got our number two definition. It's just the synonym cartographer. Uh, isn't that's that, kind of random? Yeah, it seems odd because isn't a cartographer the one who makes maps? Yeah, yeah or charts. Like, I guess nautical charts. Yeah, maybe, that's true. Maybe they specialize in boat maps. That makes sense. Yeah. All also right. well, obsolete, of course. Oh yeah, totally. And usually it will say obsolete in here if it is obsolete, but neither one of these says obsolete or archaic or anything like that. So, well, it depends um, how old the person who made the dictionary is. Yeah, totally. <laughs> like I still like paper maps. I hang on to paper maps, but I realize that no one under fifty feels that way. Yeah. Right. Like if Russia wants to take over America, all they have to do is blow up the GPS satellite, and our troops won't even be able to find their base. That is very true, and they'll need some old fogies to uh, to lead them around. Great. But now, maps. I thought I dodged war my whole life, and they're going to be, no, we need you, old man. Here's, here's the you're, map. You're the lead only us one. into battle. Yeah, because you just happen to have this random map of this area. Yeah. Well, just you can read our maps. That's going to be the thing. Mm. I'm just going to go, no, it's over that hill. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, our next word is chartreuse or you could make that s sound as z chartreuse uh i shall say chartreuse this one is spelled weird to me it is c-h-a-r-t-r-e-u-s-e -E, chartreuse it is a noun from 1884 a variable color averaging a brilliant yellow green now i've i've read a few colors in this book and i don't think i've seen one that says variable or averaging yeah, that kind of freaks me out. I think I think the guy who wrote the dictionary was BSing. I think he really didn't know. <laughs> it's like he was like, chartreuse. I know I've seen that somewhere. Isn't it that kind of green one? And his wife is like, no, it's yellow. And he's like, uh, uh, let's just say it averages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just, uh, before we got on, I posted a picture on my Instagram of a different color. It was like Serralo or something, some sort of green. And I, when I looked it up, just, you know, on Google, there's a variety of colors for this one Serralo. thing. It's something like that. Here, I'll, yeah, I'll take yeah. a look. Um, well, my, my theory is if it's not a crayon color, it's not a real color. Right. It doesn't exist. And sometimes even then. Uh, let's see this one. Oh, Celadon. That's what it was. Oh, Celadon. I think I've seen that. Isn't yeah, that yeah. A, a, a whale? Uh, the, the whales are, oh, see, I could There's go back. something like that. Yeah. Whales are, um, I'm BSing here. So I took the liberty. I, I would like you, I was kind of freaked out by the variable thing. Yeah. And, and I actually Googled it. And, uh, according to Wikipedia anyway, it's not a variable color. It doesn't change. It's a very specific color. And I can tell you the exact RGB values. <laughs> Do it. Red 128, green 255, and blue zero. So, it, you know, if it varied, they would have different numbers for that, right? Yeah. So why is it variable? I think the guy was BSing. I think he just didn't know and he was too lazy to go out and find out from somebody. I mean, look at this definition. For one thing... Okay, this is a pretty common color. Like, it didn't exist before 1884? Uh, 
or it just didn't have a name? The word, I think the word got into the English language in 1884. Yeah, but so no one in America saw that color before? <laughs> I, I'm going to say yes, correct. <laughs> so, and, and then it says uh, the definition is capital C chartreuse. So they're saying it comes from the liquor. Right, which we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, that's where it's, it's saying the name. Uh, yeah, the, but yeah, the liquor goes from. back to 1737. Yeah. And chartreuse is a French word, but they don't say it comes from the French word. No, it, they say it comes from the liquor and the color didn't exist Well, 150 there... years ago. There's a lot of stuff missing in here. I, I feel like this one wasn't very important to them, so they didn't give it yeah, as much space. Exactly. As uh, Although, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for uh, the liquor, and it does say green or yellow. Mm. Uh, so I wonder if that's partly It's funny why. they didn't just say chartreuse. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it's the same color. Hmm. Maybe it has to do with how people see color, and some people yeah. call it yellow, and some people call it green. Yeah, okay, I can buy that. Like, the color stays the same. It's just we see it differently. Yeah. I wonder if men and women see it differently. I think women possible. see more colors than men. I think they in, do. In my limited experience. Yeah, yeah. I did take one of those online tests, though, and I did get the highest score possible for distinguishing colors. So really? I, I think I have a surprisingly good color wow. distinguishing in my eyes. I don't so know. So you can tell the difference between chartreuse and celadon. Uh, probably if you showed me the two, I, I don't know. <laughs> Let's put some money on yeah. it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so the next one is chartreuse with a capital C. It's a trademark and it is used for a usually green or yellow liqueur. So I, I'm going to not buy the liquor if the color changes from green to yellow <laughs> between batches. Oh yeah. That's uh, a, <laughs> that, that's... that's a need for more quality control in my opinion. Let's see. There, there are actually separate things. There's green chartreuse and yellow chartreuse. Uh, one is naturally green from <laughs> herbs and plants, and uh, and the other one is yellow. They're, they also have a different um, alcohol percentage. The the green is a bit stronger. Um, the yellow one is a milder and sweeter flavor, and it's uh yeah interesting. So they're saying it's it's the, it's the same as the booze, and since there's two kinds of booze, it varies by which type of the booze you buy. <laughs> I guess. Right. It so all comes like, down to booze. It's like if they called it schnapps color. Right. And the, you know, but this is this is a peppermint schnapps, but that one is red pepper schnapps, and it's got a red tinge. Yeah, I I I've never even heard of this liquor, and not that I would necessarily like it, but now I'm really curious to try it. It sounds very French to me. It yeah, and it says the flavor is herbal. Uh. So, you know. All right. Not sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Chartreuse. Which Our, means charter house, by the way. I looked it up. Oh. Which is oh. the main living quarter of a Carthusian monastery. Right. I was gonna say the, the manufacturer is the Carthusian monks. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that I talked about the word Carthusian back in the day, so maybe I should go re-listen to what I said about that. Yeah. If it was in the book. Interesting. Uh, yeah. You can go down so many rabbit holes. I know. All right. Our next word is cartulary. Uh, but mm. it's, you know, it's pronounced car, but there's a CH at the beginning. This is a noun <laughs> from 1571, and the synonym is just cartulary without the H. Not only um, the synonym, but just the definition. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. There's literally no definition, and actually, that's like if your the word was potato and the definition was potato. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what's happening here. That's a this is a lazy dictionary writer. I'm sorry, I don't mean to trash your dictionary. That's right. I'm sure there were many writers, so they're all lazy. This guy was so burnt out. Yeah. By this point, well, he's got like a thousand pages to go. Plus, <laughs> I know. Um, he's like, oh, why did I take this job? <laughs> Just a reminder, uh, the definition of cartulary is uh, a collection of charters, especially a book holding copies of the charters and title deeds of an estate. So some people like to spell it with an H. It's mostly right. churches, I think, and monasteries. I will trust you on that. I've been doing a lot of uh, research into medieval Latin palindromes lately. <laughs> I really have. And I'm actually going to publish some uh, scholarly papers. I'm giving a talk at the International Medieval Congress in July. Oh, my God. Actually, I gave That's one the awesome. other day for the Paideia Institute. I'll send you the link. You can put it on the website. 
about yeah. uh, the the rotas square and uh, the tradition of latin palindromes so your your presentation at the medieval event congress yeah. the medieval congress is literally just about latin palindromes the tradition of latin palindromes yeah That's the one awesome. i gave the other day which is already available was a little more fun john ag drew two original cartoons for oh. it by the way and I covered basically all of ancient palindromes, Greek and Latin and Egyptian and word squares. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's about an hour. I think it, I think I kept it pretty lively. I put jokes <laughs> in it and stuff. Yeah, when you can when you can bring jokes and entertainment into it, you you can talk about anything and people will enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I uh, so um, are you familiar with the band? They might be giants. I am. Actually, they, they yeah. So the, I it's palindrome not, I. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, there's a, a wonderful word palindrome in that song. Um, you know, not letters, but words. Yeah. But uh, one of the members just released. It's not public yet, but he is releasing a a, a four song EP of. It's called Roman songs, and they're all in Latin. Uh, there's yeah. no palindromes, but they're all. I heard in Latin. you mention that in uh, in in a recent episode. I, I have to call some of my, uh, I have some friends I've worked out who are like professors or, or grad students in, in Latin. They're going to be very excited about that. Yeah, yeah. The Paideia it's a lot of fun. Institute will, th their whole point is to popularize classics. So they'll probably give the album away and buy a thousand copies. Oh, I'm <laughs> loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait till it goes public. I'm part of their fan club, so I've already oh, heard cool. it. But uh, yeah, the, the rest of the people need to hear it. Um, all right. Next, we have the word... This is interesting. Charwoman. I feel like we had a related word recently, and I can't remember, but I've read so many words, I forget them all. Char a woman, woman who is horribly burned in a fire. Is basically what it, she's been charred with some charcoal. <laughs> uh, That's a this, terrible word. Yeah. Well, so what it, the definition, it, it's a noun from 1596, a cleaning woman, especially in a large building. Oh. And the I, janitor lady. Yeah, basically. And I think that the char is something specific. There's some reason that's there, and I don't, I don't know why it because huh. they don't explain it here. But yeah. I mean, it just comes. Oh, it comes from the word char with an e. Uh, and let's see. Let me just go back a, a page. So did the word chairman originally mean janitor, dude? <laughs> oh, it's char. It's char woman because the word char. It's actually pronounced chair with an e means chore. I forgot oh. that. So it's uh, she's the chore woman. That's basically what it is. She does the chores. The chore man of the board. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we talked about chairman and all that stuff before. Mm. Okay, it's been covered. I won't go there then. Yeah. Well, I've I, like I said, I've forgotten most of it, but we, yeah. we have discussed it. Uh, I've discussed it with myself, basically. Languages evolve. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Next we have this. I wonder if this is similar. Uh, it is cherry. C H A R Y. It is an adjective from the 15th century. We've got a few definitions. Number one is archaic. Synonyms are dear, like D E A R, and treasured. It is so treasured. It is cherry. I have never heard this because it is archaic. Yeah, it's archaic. Number two, discreetly cautious, as 2A, hesitant and vigilant about dangers and risks. 2B. Yeah, that's what I think of. Wary. Cherry is wary basically yeah right? yeah yeah and then we do have a, another synonym coming up that you know encompasses all of that as well uh but we've got to be slow to grant accept or expend as in a person very cherry of compliments i just right. love the phrase very cherry yeah i i like this word this is actually one of my favorite words it, had you heard it before oh uh, yeah 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 okay You'll uh, recall from my article, The Seven Useless Skills of the Palindromist, that vocabulary is one of the key tools the palindromist uses. Well, you, you, can't, you can't make very many palindromes if you don't have a good vocabulary. You need all the words you can find. You really yeah. need. The dictionary is your friend. Oh, yeah. No, literally, the first time I wrote a, a palindrome, I picked up a dictionary and just dug through it like, you know, a crate digger DJ yeah. kind of thing, finding the words I needed. Yeah, I think when I was writing the one, I, I think I had to pull out the dictionary to see, is this a word? <laughs> Do these letters start to create oh, yeah, a word? Oh, yeah, you have to. Yeah. It's, no, it's, and, and, and uh, I had gotten as a Christmas present the Oxford Shorter Dictionary. So I had words like virago in there. <laughs> nice. That I'd never heard of before. 
Yes. Um, I also bought a book and I'm reading it uh, for Patreon exclusives. It's like 6,000 unusual words that aren't oh. in the dictionary. Nice. Um, yeah. There, there are some interesting ones in there. Uh, let's see. Just to finish up, Cherry, the synonym is the word cautious. Mm. Uh, cherily is an adverb. Um, and it's a Middle English word, and it means sorrowful or dear. Uh, oh. From the Old English, now maybe you know how to pronounce this, Kerig, Cherig? I do not know that. Yeah, I don't know my Old English. Uh, but that means sorrowful from Karu, which means sorrow, and there's more at the word care. So yeah, we get the word care from right. Cherry. Careful. Yeah, basically. exactly. Careful right. and wary. Yep, yep. Cautious, all that stuff. All right, our next word is Charybdis, capital C-H-A-R-Y-B-D-I-S, Charybdis. I guess you could also say Charybdis or Charybdis, if you so like. Uh, This is a noun from 1511. It is a whirlpool off the coast of Sicily personified in Greek mythology as a female monster. And then it says to compare to the word Scylla, spelled s-c-y-l-l-a right because it's from the odyssey right this is homer i this think is, you're uh, right uh, this is uh, the 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 uh, uh charybdis and scylla is the rock in the hard place it's been way too long since i read that book i guess I scylla right. must be the rock so charybdis is a hard place which is a whirlpool which is actually kind of soft and deadly yeah it's kind of like a, a wet tornado Right, <laughs> almost a Sharknado, but not quite. <laughs> there may be sharks in it. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. that's well, where so... they got Sharknado. Like a, a a a whirlpool came out of the water up into the air and took the sharks with it. Yeah, let's see. Uh, the the Scylla is the legendary monster who lives on one side of a narrow channel of water opposite the counterpart Charybdis. Uh, yeah, so, you know, the rock in the hard place might not be literal, but, um, yeah, they are definitely, that is like, you know, you got this one bad thing on that side and this bad yeah. thing on that side. And what do you do? Well, hard to get through without dying, I think. is. is yeah, name. exactly. Uh, and yes, yeah, Scylla is first attested in Homer's Odyssey. All right. Well done. So I think the first time that I was aware of this word Charybdis was in my oh, probably late teens or early 20s. Somebody told me that in the city, uh, Chicago, uh, there was a place that you could go. Young Younger people could go and hang out. And they had like a little skate park and huh. games and uh, music. And you could play a frisbee. It was this large, very large indoor place. And I went wow. there once and it was very cool. I don't, I think it was mostly for underage kids, you know, so yeah. there was no alcohol, but uh, it was really cool. And I wish it was that called I Charybdis? it was called Charybdis. Oh my and god! I, I wasn't aware of what that was, um, but uh, yeah. And then, then I think they closed shortly after that. It, it's a weird name to give to a place you want people to go to. It is a weird name. <laughs> it's like a, a a good name for an evil character in a like a gothic novel, like right a murder mystery or something. Charybdis. Yeah, yeah. Don't date Charybdis, man. Jeez. See if you can get that in a palindrome. <laughs> oh, that's a... Well, Sid by... Actually, it's not bad at all. Uh, Sid and then by and then Ra, R-A-A, like a cheer, mm. and then any word that starts with a C. Yeah, yeah well, so no, what that's is, pretty easy, actually. So so what is the Sid, S-I-D? Does that mean... Could be a guy named Sid. Sure, sure, sure. Or uh, it could be a word that ends with S, something, you know, as right. I-D. Oh, I don't man. know. I don't know why you end up with, why you have the word by followed by raw. So you're right. like interrupted by a cheerleader in the middle of your sentence. It's a <laughs> little right. awkward. Well, see, that's what I find so amazing about creating palindromes is that you can get so creative with your grammar and you know punctuation marks and all you that. You have to. Yeah, yes, yes. That's what's so amazing. See, it now you're just to... stealing stuff out of my article, the seven useless arts of the polymerist, because <laughs> punctuation is another one. Humor is another one. Uh, but yeah, the punctuation, all the parentheses and semicolons mm-hmm. and dashes and very you need all of it. All of it. But it, right. it, it breaks into words. And so then it's just up to your creativity in, in diagramming a sentence to get it to make sense. Exactly. All right. Well, if you ever do create a palindrome with the word Charybdis in there, you got to send it to me. I'll, I'll give you a footnote. I'll, I'll shout you out. 
Awesome. Awesome. Spencer made me do this. Don't blame me. <laughs> Just blame him. I wasn't going to do it. I Right. I tried to avoid it like the plague, but he forced me. He yeah, called me every day. I was day. stuck between a rock and a hard place. Ah. Now, if you can work that into the palindrome too, <laughs> now there you go. All right. Well, so we only have one more word for this episode, but there are five forms of it, and it's, you know, half wow. of this section. So, uh, it is the word chase, spelled C-H-A-S-E. The first form is a noun from the 13th century, 1A, the hunting of wild animals. And that is used with the word the, so the chase. 1B, the act of chasing. Synonym is pursuit. 1C, an earnest or frenzied seeking after something desired. 2. Something pursued, and a synonym is quarry. That's, now, I, I haven't that's... heard that. The first one makes a ton of sense, right? You enjoy the chase. But mm-hmm. I am the chase that is being chased? That doesn't sound right. Yeah, and I, I'm not really familiar with this word quarry in this context. Well, Q-U-A-R-R. quarry. I've heard quarry. Quarry, quarry, okay. quarry. Yeah, like that, the prey. It okay, just okay. prey. Yeah, so I guess that's called chase interesting Mm -hmm. yeah now if you're being stumped then i know it's if i'm the editor i just cut that one and i go no (laughs) no but you know they have to get they got to get every single possible use of the word well it is 13th century so a lot could have changed oh yeah by that absolutely that's a long time ago um okay number three a tract of unenclosed land used as a game preserve four The synonym is just the number one definition for the word steeplechase. So they didn't have time to say steeplechase. They just shortened it to chase. That's like hipster language. That's like, you're running track? Yeah, chase. I'm doing chase, man. But but that was back in the 14th century. (laughs) Yeah. Hipster 14th language, 14th century language. Um, And then number five, a sequence, as in a movie, in which the characters pursue one another. That's always fun parallel editing. Now, now I've got a bone to pick there. They don't pursue one another. That's just a romance if they're pursuing one another. True. It's generally one of them is pursuing the other one. Yes, yes. The It's not that hard if they're pursuing each other. They're just like, oh, there you are. Cool. Right. Yeah, I think we can just take off the uh, one another and yeah, that. just yeah. end it with pursue. To Again, if I'm pursue. editor, red pen slash. Yep, yep. Well, you know. You can make your own, maybe. Your own. All book. right. Yeah, I've, I've got lots of extra time to create yeah. a dictionary. <laughs> um, all right. We have now the second form of chase. This is a verb from the 14th century. We are starting with transitive 1A. To follow rapidly, synonym is pursue. To you chase. A, yeah. 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 Uh, 1B, synonym is hunt. Uh, mm-hmm. Next is 1C. To follow regularly or persistently with the intention of attracting or alluring. Uh, that's called stalking. I think they're, they're <laughs> the sexual harassment, I think, is really what we call that now. Yeah. Well, well maybe when we get to the word stalk, uh, it'll yeah. be the exact same definition. Make a note. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's like a decade from now. <laughs> I have a lot of Remind notes. me. <laughs> Uh, okay, number two is obsolete. The synonym is harass. So yeah, that's definitely related there. So uh, good palindrome, harass Sarah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, oh, that's perfect. It's just the two words. That's yeah. it. The double S and then the S on Sarah, three S's in a row, harass yeah. Sarah. Yeah, but but please don't go no, harass no, Sarah. No, 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 it's, it's a palindrome. It's <laughs> She doesn't appreciate metaphor. it. Yeah, no. That's a good one, though, nice and short. Uh, number three, to seek out, and that is often used with the word down, chase down, as in mm, detectives right. chasing down clues. Right. Number four, to cause, to depart, or flee, and a synonym is drive, as in chase the dog out of the garden. Yeah, sure. Okay. Five, to cause the removal of by a batting rally. And the part in parentheses is talking about a baseball pitcher. So to cause the removal of a baseball pitcher by a batting rally. What what other kinds of when when else do you have a batting rally except in a baseball game? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Uh, If you're if if you have pets who are bats 
and you everybody brings their pet bats and you have a rally. Ah, I see where you're going. I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, you're not. And why would you be swinging at the bats anyway? No, that yeah. we don't want to hurt them. No, that's uh, oh, weird. Okay, so uh, similarly, number six to swing at. Well, that's the end of the definition. But then the parenthesis says a baseball pitched out of the strike zone to swing. Oh, yeah, at. chasing the pitch. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so those were transitive. Now we have intransitive. One, to chase an animal, person, or thing, as in chase after material possessions. Sure. Number two, synonyms are rush and hasten, as in chased all over town looking for a place to stay. A bit of a stretch. Yeah. Okay. I'll allow it. I'm rushing. I'm hastening. I don't know. Yeah. Um, now we have some additional synonym information for this form of chase. I love this because it just gives more specific information about the synonyms. Mm. So we've got chase, pursue, follow, trail, mean to go after or on the track of something or someone. Chase implies going swiftly after and trying to overtake something, fleeing or running, as in a dog chasing a cat. Pursue suggests a continuing effort to overtake, reach, or attain, as in, pursued... Now I lost my place. <laughs> pursued <laughs> the criminal through narrow streets. Follow puts less emphasis upon speed or intent to overtake, as in, friends followed me home in their car. Well, you maybe you were drunk or something. They, that's good of them. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and then trail may stress a following of tracks or traces rather than a visible object, as in right. trail deer, also as in trailed a suspect across the country. Well, I think of trail as when you can't see them, right? If you're chasing mm. somebody or following them, you can see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're trailing them, you're trying to, yeah, like it said, following the tracks. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, rather than a visible object. Yep, yep, yep. I, I like this whole explanation thing, but my only bone to pick with it is sometimes you chase and you don't really care about catching. Like when my daughters were little, they actually like, I'm trying mm. to, you know, raise them. You're just as good as boys and stuff. And they would go up to boys and just go, chase me, chase me. Like grab them and like, ah, you're ruining all my feminist uh, dreams for you. <laughs> Um, but it's just fun and the, no one expects the boy to tackle her. Right. <laughs> right. It's just, it's a game you play or like they talk about, you know, your dog's chasing a car and people have the phrase, it's like the dog that caught the car. The dog, dog doesn't really have a plan if it catches the car. No. What does it do? <laughs> Kills it and eats it. Right. I feel like there was a far side joke about that. Like what did the. The, what did the dog do? What does the dog do when it once it catches the car? I don't know. Oh, I'm yeah, probably yeah. making that up. I'm sure it did. That was a Greek strip. Yes. You're showing um, your age though. Oh, uh, dude. In the 1940s, I think, when that was. <laughs> uh, I, no, I'm, uh, yeah, solidly in the oh. 80s and 90s, but uh, but <laughs> okay. it's, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it uh, it it came back. Uh, he's got a oh, website, really? and he oh um, nice. He's he posts new comics every once in a while, but I think after a little bit they go away, and so I've only uh, seen a couple. So you got to uh, jump on them. Yeah, yeah. If you guys don't Smart. know what the far side is, you got to go check it out. Yeah, there was a weird thing in the Northwest where I'm from. There was a comedian in Seattle named Gary Larson who had oh. nothing to do with the comic strip, but everybody knew the comic strip. And he would show up and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Gary Larson. He's like, well, kind of. Not really. And he We're actually both changed funny. his name. I can't remember what his other name. He actually ended up changing his name because it was so annoying. I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's expecting you to like draw a comic on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, no, I just say funny things. Yeah, I just talk. Uh, all right, so here we go with the third form of chase. This is... Uh... Oh, this is my favorite. Okay, good. Uh, this is a, a transitive verb. Um, from the 15th century, number one, A, to ornament metal by indenting with a hammer and tools without a cutting edge. I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. Or... Uh, one B, to make by such indentation... Uh, and then 1C, to set with gems. Yeah. Uh, 2A, synonyms are groove and indent. And then 2B, 
to cut with a chaser. And the example of what you are cutting is a thread. Yeah, they lost me on that one. But I, I love this word because if I'm understanding them correctly, basically it means make something prettier by hitting it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> As a dude, that very much appeals to me. Yes. Your car looks kind of plain to me, Spencer. Here, let me pretty it up a little. Let me just. I got a mini sledge. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's pretty that much. That looks like it. a steel drum. Oh man, that would be so fun if my car was also a steel drum. <laughs> Can we make that happen? Well, let's try. Yeah. Why don't I beat it with a hammer and we'll see if it has the sound of a steel drum? Yeah, if it doesn't work, we'll just hit undo. Yeah, exactly. I'll just pull the ladder, the hammer back. <laughs> right. Just so make, I was yeah. reading this, and I wondered if this is actually the origin of the phrase, a shot and a chaser. Interesting. Now, I had always before thought it meant that you, 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 you know, you have a, a shot of alcohol and then you chase it with, with a beer that's following it down your throat. But that always seemed a little weak to me uh, compared to the effect of doing that. And, and trying to make something prettier by beating it with a hammer is a lot closer to my experience <laughs> of having a beer quickly after doing a shot. Well, I, I'm just going to say that you are correct uh, because I like, I like, the, I like your, your, your thought train there. We'll take a vote. Two to nothing. Okay. Yeah, it wins. It, it wins. Um, let's see. Uh, the etymology, by the way, says it's from Anglo-French enchasser, which means to set. So yeah, that's oh. all about setting the the gems and things. But man, now I really want to just smack some metal with a hammer yeah. and see what I can make. I'll set you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that hammer. Uh, all right. Our fourth form of chase is a noun from 1611. One, th these are all related. Uh, number one, the synonyms are groove and furrow. Two, the bore of a cannon. Three, wow. a synonym is trench man my mouth was about to say stench yeah maybe i'm smelling myself trenches uh, often have stenches yeah that's true uh 3b a channel as in a wall for something to lie in or pass through like water maybe um, uh uh to pass through would be a door yeah true true right? true yeah so that'd be the to, chase how do you yeah. lie in a wall that that sounds a little I, I'm picturing like a chase scene where uh, the police are chasing the guy. He goes around the corner and there's a little indentation in the wall and he slides into it and they, mm -hmm. look and they can't see him because he's kind of, I guess that's what it means. I guess. <laughs> but that's like the opposite of a chase. That's like an escape from a chase. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's interesting. This is why etymology of these things are so interesting. Yeah. Um, but actually, that maybe this will help. Uh, it is from the French word. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Chasse, C-H-A-S, yeah. which yeah. means eye of a needle ah. from the lower Latin capsus, which means enclosed space. So, yeah, that's sort of what you were saying before. Okay. Um, uh, I bet that's related to capsule. Yeah, probably. Uh, it's alternative of the Latin capsa, which means box. And there's more at the word case. So, okay. yeah, it's uh, like a space, uh, an enclosed space, a box, something like that. Related to capsicum for pepper? Uh, very kind of hollow. Peppers yeah, are yeah, hollow, yeah. Maybe. It's possible. Know. A total spitball. And... Yeah, that's what we do here. I think all <laughs> words just come from like two words. Yeah. yeah. Mama and Dada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all variations. Pretty much. All right. And our last and final word, it's still chase. It's the fifth form noun from 1612, just one year after the last one, a rectangular steel or iron frame in which letterpress matter is locked. And then the example is for printing. Uh, so they put it, put now, it in a chase. Now that is obscure and yeah. obsolete. That's why it's the last one. Makes sense. Uh, and they say it's probably from the French chasse, which means frame or reliquary. Uh, reliquary. Uh, I think. Reliquary. That's Thank what you, you put your relics in, your piece of the true cross. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, you know, St. Joan's lips or whatever that you, <laughs> you worship. Right. And if you have St. Joan's lips, <laughs> give those them are, back. might be worth something. That's really, she I think you them. should give them back. You shouldn't sell somebody's lips. That's just yeah. rude. 
Um, so those were all the words. I'm just going to reread them quickly. Chartist, chartreuse, chartreuse, ch- uh, how do you say, <laughs> carcellary, yep, uh, charwoman, cherry, charybdis, and l- many forms of chase. So, Mark, you get to now pick your word of the episode, and you can use oh, whatever criteria you it's want. It's cherry. I, I have to go with cherry, because that's one you can use still to this day. And uh, it, it, it comes up a lot. You should be careful. If you're reading conspiracy theories on the internet, you should be cherry. Excellent. The word of this episode is cherry. It's not the cherry you eat. It's the uh, cautious and wary cherry. Be very cherry of yes. Harry Larry. I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see, let's see. I think that's it for that. Uh, you know, just just real quick, I've I've taken on this tradition now of saying some holidays that are today. Mm. So I will quickly just go through those. Please. In Nigeria, it is something that I do not know how to pronounce. It is the second day of Id El Fitter. I'm mm. just gonna say that's, that's right. how you say it. Close enough. Eid Eid El Fitter, I think. Yeah. Uh, in Chile, it is National Engineers Day. It is Independence Day in Paraguay, or Paraguay. There are no major holidays in the U.S. It's also Flag Day in Paraguay, which is probably related to Independence Day. In Malawi, it is Hastings, Banda's birthday. In Liberia, it is National Unification Day. And it is the first day of Izo Taisha Shrine Grand Festival. And what are our fun holidays? It's... No, I don't want to create an account with this web page. Thank you very much. It is <laughs> National Buttermilk Biscuit Day. That's highly specific, mm. but tasty. And it is also National Dance Like a Chicken Day. So Wow. I go. think every day is National Buttermilk Biscuit Day. It should be. Yeah. I really want some biscuits and gravy now. Yeah, that sounds um, really good. Yeah, so that is all we are going to do for this episode. Thank you for, for joining me and uh, providing some very wonderful color commentary. Oh, sure. This is super fun. Anytime. And, and that color, of course, is chartreuse. <laughs> yes. It changes. Sometimes I feel green. Sometimes I feel yellow. Yeah. I'm just a chartreuse kind of guy. Awesome. Uh, and then just uh, one last thing that I wanted to mention about palindromes. I've mentioned this in this, this show before, but... Um, I have uh, I enjoy backwards talking, so it's recording oh, my can audio. Can you do that a bit? Yeah, uh, recording wow. it, flipping it, learning how to say it, and then recording that. I've heard that of people it. who have that skill, but I've never actually met one before. Do some. Do some. Okay. Well, I'll just give you. Let's see something that comes off the top of my head. Um, uh, oh my God! Now my can brain you do is that? blank. Uh, what, what's the uh, uh, What's the song? Is it Lil Kim or? Um... Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Put your thing down, flip it, and reverse yeah, yeah. it. I, I don't. I don't know. I never memorized Rip that one part. Yeah, yeah. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. It's your primitive It's your Well, I I can say my name, Spencer. It if you flip the letters, it looks like you would pronounce it Recknaps, but obviously yeah. that wouldn't work. So my right. name, Spencer. Per, uh, you know, phonetically backwards would be Ersnaps. Spencer. So oh. it's not it's not all that different, but it's pretty close. You know, yeah. Mark would be Crom. Hamar. Mark Kerm. Yeah. Crom. Yeah. Mark Kerm. It'd be I, I, like Karm, right? Mark Karm. It'd be uh, Crom. There's a the, well, the spelling. R. It would be Crom, but the well, sound, the, your, in your case, like? it actually works both ways. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Mm-hmm. Salt vite might be that's a little bit different. Salt vite, uh, tiav, tiav tlas, salt, salt vite, right. salt. yeah. We always say tiav tlas, but that's based on spelling, not the right. Sound. Right, it's close though. You, you I have don't one have of those the gene that can do the, the backward sound, or at least I haven't I, practiced it. I, mean, I have tried to explain this, this to people, and they, they're like, What? I, I can't, I don't understand. But the reason I bring it up is because uh, I have played with, with my friend a couple of times to create phonetic palindromes. So oh. it sounds the same, essentially, yeah. when you play it backwards and forwards. Cool. Um, so that's a whole other thing that you could get into if you, yeah, <laughs> if you well, want to. We could definitely put a link to that on the website at palindromist.org. 
<laughs> yeah. I'd be the, happy to put some of that on there. The easiest one, and my, my cousin told me this, I had no clue. It's so short and simple, and you would never in a million years think that this would be a phonetic palindrome. Yeah. But it's just the phrase, yeah, right. Yeah, right. What? Yeah, right. If you don't enunciate the T in right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It, yeah, you play right. it backwards, and it's yeah, right. Wow. It's crazy. That blows my mind. Do you listen to lots of 60s psychedelic rock? Because they all had the little backwards, oh, like yeah. sitars or whatever. Yes. Not the lyrics too much. Not often the words. Right, right. And, and That's of course, why that one I, I bring up, reverse it. Yeah. Man, when I heard that for the first time, I was like, what? She she played the her How audio did she backwards? Do, I mean, I, does she have you seen her do it live i'm wondering no. if, can she really does she sing that part or did they just um a missy elliott that's right who it is. right 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 yeah i, I, I what, don't know yeah. i she's so awesome that i think that she probably would learn how to do that backwards right. to do it that's live. what i imagine is is uh uh the first time they just use the studio tape yeah. trick yeah but it, it wouldn't be that hard to do no, it's a pretty short phrase. Zip, nip, 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 sure, nah. It's something yeah. like that. Well, now I'm inspired to go learn that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It wouldn't be that, all that hard either. Uh, that would that would kill at karaoke. Oh yeah, if you could do when that we live do karaoke. Yes, yes. Oh, people, oh, people will be hooting and hollering. Uh, maybe someday. Maybe someday when I'm allowed to leave the house again. And, and when we have karaoke again. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, this has been a blast. I would love to have you on again in the future. Sure. You know, we have anytime fifteen hundred pages to go in this book. It's yeah, I'll have my me... my talk at the International Medieval Congress to promote in July. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. We'll get <laughs> the you on traditional for that. Latin palindromes. It's going to be a scorcher. And make one, sure so. that when you do that, that you'll you'll let the people know that you were on an episode of this oh, podcast. Of <laughs> so You've they can all go seen listen. him on the Dictionary Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> really he he yeah. was on the dictionary amazing how did you see him it was a sound only podcast that's weird i saw his voice yeah yeah all right well all right. we're, we're gonna end again. it there thank you very much and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to this podcast it is called the dictionary hosted by me spencer so uh, I hope you listened to yesterday's yesterday's episode. I need to speak a little slower so I can enunciate my words better. Uh, yesterday's episode, we had a guest, Mark Saltvite. I hope you listened to it. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope that you go uh, watch the movie, The Palindromists, and you go, you know, check out his books and his speaking things. And he's he's all over in his comedy, obviously. I think that's kind of first and foremost for him. But uh, yeah, he's a fascinating dude. So go check him out. All right. Um, we are in the third section of this page. The, our first word is chaser. First form, C-H-A-S-E-R, noun from the 13th century. One, one that chases. Two, a mild drink taken after hard liquor. And the example of this mild drink would be beer. Some people probably don't think beer is mild, but for most people, it's pretty mild. Uh, yeah, we had mentioned that in the last episode. Mark mentioned that about a chaser, and oh, I loved his... Uh, I, I can't remember now where it was exactly, but he said, I, I, love, I love the idea of... Uh, using this definition as where the word chaser came from, having a beer after a shot of some kind. But, oh, I just thought that was the very a very uh, unique way to look at it. But I can't find it now. Anyway, uh, okay, second form of chaser, noun from 1707. One, a skilled worker who produces ornamental chasing. Uh, are we going to see? Oh, I think that uh, goes back to... Where was that? We we got... Uh, I can't find it. It was like hitting metal with things and... Uh, yeah, ornament metal by indenting with a hammer. So maybe that's what that is. Um, two, a tool for cutting screw threads. Next we have... I think it would be pronounced Hasid or something close to that. Um, it is spelled C-H-A-S-I-D with a capital C or you could have two S's. Uh, and this is a variation of the synonym Hasid, H-A-S-I-D, which I believe is a 
uh, Hebrew or Yiddish Jewish word. Uh, and then the plural would be Hasidim. Yes, you, we've added an I-M at the end. Next, we have Chasm. C-H-A-S-M. But it's pronounced Chasm. Noun from 1596. One, a deep cleft in the surface of a planet. Uh, and the example is the Earth. Yeah, that's the, the Earth is a planet. Uh, I don't really know why they had to put that example in here, but okay. Uh, and then the synonym is gorge. That's how you say that, right? Gorge? Yeah, G-O-R-G-E. Isn't that the same word? If you eat a lot of food, you're gorging? Hmm. Those must be related somehow, I guess. Number two, a marked division, separation, or difference. There's a chasm between these two people's personalities. I don't know. That's the first thing I could think of. This is from Latin, chasma, from the Greek, akin to the Latin hiare, or hiare, which means to yawn. Ah, and there's more at the word yawn. So a chasm is like a big yawn in the planet. Uh, next, we have chasse, C-H-A-S-S-E, with an accent on the E. So you have to say chasse, chasse. What did I say? What did I say, chasse? This is, uh, it's an intransitive verb from 1803. One, to make a chasse. And then two, the synonym sachet. Now, there is something. There's a song, right? Chasse, sachet. I don't know it. I've heard it. Maybe I'll find a clip of it and put it in here, but it's a very, very fun words to say. Sachet, chasse, something like that. Anyway, let's look at the second form of chasse, which I'm assuming is the thing in the first definition that we read. It is a noun from 1828. 1828. The other one came from 1803. This one's 1828. And did you know that people were sachet, chasseing in the early 1800s? It is a sliding dance step, a sliding dance step resembling the gallop. Really? Okay. Uh, it is French from the verb chasser, which means to chase. So, man, I'm kind of tempted to find some video of this old school sliding dance step resembling a gallop. Okay, now we have chaspo. Chaspo. It's spelled C-H-A-S-A-S-S-E-P-O-T. C-H-A-S-S-E-P-O-T. It looks like chaspot, but you say chaspo. Noun from 1869. It is a bolt-action rifle firing a paper cartridge. Well, that seems a lot safer than a bullet cartridge. It is French from Antoine A. Chaspo, who died in 1905 and was a French inventor. So, you know, he probably invented the paper cartridge. No, I mean, maybe he did, but he probably invented this rifle. Chaspo. Next, we have chasser. Chasser? Chasser. Spelled C-H-A-S-S-E-U-R. I would want to say chasseur, but it says chasser. All these French words, they throw, throw me off. Noun from 1795. Number one, synonyms are hunter and huntsman. So this must must be related to this rifle. Number two, one of a body of light cavalry or infantry trained for rapid maneuvering. Three, a liveried attendant. Synonym is footman or footman. Liveried attendant, I think that's the person who delivers stuff, right? Isn't livery another word for like delivery? And we lengthened it to deliver. I don't know what the connection is there, but I think that's what that is. Uh, possibly. You know, somebody who does stuff, who, who like they're like a gopher. So, yeah, this is French from the old French chakur, from chakier, chassier, something like that, which means to hunt and chase, uh, from the vulgar Latin captiare, and there's more at the word catch. So, technically, this is not looking like it's connected to that rifle, even though the first six letters are exactly the same. So, maybe it's just a coincidence that Antoine Chaspo made a thing that would be possibly used for hunting, which is called chasseur, or, you know, related to that. Anyway, next word is chassis, or ch- chassis, 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 
C-H-A-S-S-I-S. I think I, I just say chassis. Noun from circa 1864. The supporting frame of a structure. That's the end of that part. There is parentheses talking about, we're talking about an automobile or a television. So a television technically has a chassis. It's the supporting frame for the full structure. And then also the frame and working parts exclusive of the body or housing. And then the example again is automobile or electronic device. Next word is chaste. Adjective from the 13th century. One, innocent of unlawful sexual intercourse. Uh, There's a lot going on in that one. Uh, Number two, synonym is celibate. Three, pure in thought and act. Synonym is modest. Yeah, I think that's sort of like maybe the most common or more generic use of this word, pure in thought and act. Yeah, Uh, but obviously all these other ones are commonly used with this word too. 4A, severely simple in design or execution. Synonym is austere, as in chaste classicism. And then 4B, synonyms are clean and spotless. This is from the Latin costus, which means pure. Uh, oh, and then chastely is an adverb. Chasteness is a noun, and we have some synonym information. So if you didn't know nothing about this word, here we go. Chaste, pure, modest, and decent mean free from all taint of what is lewd or salacious. And for you more adult people, I just think it's kind of interesting their use of the word taint in this situation, this specific situation. But let's move on. Chaste primarily implies a refraining from acts or even thoughts or desires that are not virginal or not sanctioned by marriage vows, as in they maintain chaste relations. Pure differs from chaste in implying innocence and absence of temptation rather than control of one's impulses and actions, as in the pure of heart. Modest and decent apply especially to deportment and dress as outward signs of inward chastity or purity, as in preferred more modest swimsuits. Also as in decent people didn't go to such movies. That is kind of a judgment, I think. Okay, We are done with chaste, but let's now talk about chasten, which is going to be related. It is a verb from the 13th century, and I think it is just transitive. One, to correct by punishment or suffering. Synonym is discipline. And then also the synonym purify. Two, A, to prune of excess, pretense, or falsity. Synonym is refine. And then the example of the thing that you are pruning would be work or a style of art. 2B, to cause to be more humble or restrained. Synonym is subdue. And then another synonym for everything is the word punish. Chastener is a noun. Let's see. Let's look at the etymology. Is there anything interesting to say? Wow, there's actually a lot. Alternative of the obsolete English word chaste without the N, which means to chasten from the Anglo-French chastier, from the Latin castigare, which is costus plus igare, uh, which is from the word agere, which means to drive. And we saw earlier costus means pure. So pure drive to drive to purity, something like that. And there's more at the word act. Okay, we're on a last word. It is chastise, C-H-A-S-T-I-S-E, verb from the 14th century just transitive number one to inflict punishment on and the example is as by whipping don't do this two to censure severely and there are so many versions of the word censure i have to say that this one is spelled c-e-n-s-u-r-e and the synonym is castigate three is archaic synonym is the number two definition for the word chasten And then finally, synonym for everything is the word punish. Chastisement uh, is a noun, and chastiser is a noun. 
this is, uh, yeah, that's good for that. Okay, so we had Chaser, uh, Hasid, Chasm, Chasse, Chasse, Chaspo, Chasser, Chassy, Chased, Chasen, and Chastise. I had to double check my pronunciations on a few of those. Um, what do I want to pick? Um, mm, you know what, just for fun, because I think it's just a fun thing for people to do if they want to do it. Let's just pick Chasse as the word of the episode. Why not? All right, Chasse. I already sort of sang a thing about that, so that's fine. Uh, All right, it is holiday time here in America. It is Armed Forces Day, so thank you to the Armed Forces people. It is National Chocolate Chip Day. That might be in our list of fun holidays, too, so I... It's just... So it doesn't say Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. It's just Chocolate Chip Day. So don't eat cookies. Just, Just eat and admire some chocolate chips. It is also International Day of Families. That's, you know, all over the world. It is in Canada. They're also celebrating National Chocolate Chip Day, so yay. That should be International Chocolate Chip Day, I think. It is uh, in the UK. It is Dinosaur Day. Yeah, dinosaurs. It's National Families Week. That's, I'm sure, the same as International Day of Families. In Canada, Police Week starts in Moldova and Ukraine. It is Europe Day. In Australia, it is Walk Safely to School Day. Not Walk to School Day, but Walk Safely. All the other days, you can walk unsafely. In Colombia and Mexico, it is World Teacher Day. In Latvia and Moldova, it is Ziwa Ziwa Familiei. Oh, that's probably the uh, Families Week. So this week is all about families eating chocolate chips. What else is it? In Kyoto, it is uh, Aoi Mautsuri. It's Army Day in Slovenia. It is Constituent Assembly Day in Lithuania. It is Independence Day in Paraguay. I like that those rhyme. It is International Conscientious Conscientious Objectors Day. I like that one. There was that movie, uh, Hacksaw Ridge, I think is what it was called, about that conscientious objector. Um, It's Mother's Day in Paraguay. It's... Nakba Day in Palestinian communities. In the U.S., it's also Peace Officers Memorial Day. In Lithuania, it is Republic Day. It's also Teachers Day in Colombia, Mexico, and South Korea. I think some of those were repeats from the other page that I was on, but they were slightly different. All right, some fun holidays for May 15th. Like I said, National Armed Forces Day, still National Chocolate Chip Day, Peace Officers Memorial Day, it is also, I, why don't why wasn't this listed in all the other places? If you can, enjoy this. It is World Whiskey Day all over the world. International Day of Families, yes. It, it's also International Astronomy Day. So this is a great day if the, uh, if the sky is clear to go out, even with some binoculars and just, uh, just look up at the stars. And, you know, even for five minutes, I think we just need to, sit and enjoy that for a bit of time more so all right that's all i gotta say thank you very much for listening and until next time this is spencer dispensing information goodbye hello word nerds welcome to this podcast called the dictionary i am so glad you are here uh you know please please tell other people about it P- tell all the people that you think might be interested and then you can tell all the people who you think might not be interested and then you can say hey you should go listen to this but also you should write a review cuz the guy is he's he's shamelessly asking for reviews all the time because he loves them so much you can find me on instagram and twitter at dictionarypod All this information is in the show notes. You can also email me, dictionarypod at gmail.com. If you want to give me some money, I have a Patreon. And once I hit an even point, I will start giving the money to other Patreons. So we all all win. And I make no money. Uh, I think that is good for that. Oh, there's also a Google Voice number. If you want to leave a voicemail, and maybe I'll play it on an episode. Okay. The first word at the end of page 209 is chastity. This is related to the other words that we read in the last episode, so you should go listen to that one first. Noun from the 13th century. It is spelled C-H-A-S-T-I-T-Y. One 
the quality or state of being chaste, as 1a, abstention from unlawful sexual intercourse, 1b, abstention from all sexual intercourse, 1c, purity in conduct and intention, 1d, restraint and simplicity in design or expression, 2, personal integrity. Next is chastity belt. No, this is a noun from 1931. A belt device, as of medieval times, designed to prevent sexual intercourse on the part of the woman wearing it. So, yes, I guess these existed in the back in the olden days. Maybe they still exist to some extent these days. Uh, there was a great movie great i put in air quotes you know it's goofy fun it's it's a mel brooks movie i believe it was men in tights prince of uh robin hood men in tights uh very silly movie but i believe in that one there was a joke about this chastity belt thing um if i'm remembering correctly but you know this is a thing that people this is a happened but uh, so i just kind of feel like Maybe the men should have been wearing chastity belts too, because that was it's arguably a much bigger problem. But that's not how they viewed it back then. Okay, moving on to Chazabel. 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 Something like that. It is uh, spelled C H A S U B L E. Chazabel. Noun from the 14th century. It is a sleeveless outer vestment worn by the officiating priest at Mass. There's a picture. Uh, yep, it's, uh, you know, you've seen it. It's sort of this cloak-looking thing, and it's got some, uh, looks like some crosses and some other things, and yeah. Um, so that, so the, no, the first one is the Gothic form. That's the one that I sort of described. The number two one is called Fiddleback. I don't know what fiddleback means, but it's, um, you know, there's a there's a cross pattern on it, which has some smaller crosses on it, and then there's an insignia in the middle, and it's very similar, but it's a little bit different. So that's the chazabel. Um, this is from Lower Latin, kazubla, kazubla, which is a hooded garment. Next, we have the word chat, C-H-A-T. First form verb from the 15th century, starting with intransitive. Number one, synonyms are chatter and prattle. Chatter prattle. Two, uh, sorry, to A, to talk in an informed or familiar manner. To B, to take part in an online discussion in a chat room. We are chatting. Now we have the transitive definitions. Uh, just the one, I guess. It's chiefly British. To talk to. Especially to talk lightly, glibly, or flirtatiously with. And that is often used with the word up. I'm going to chat you up. Chat up. We are chatting up. Uh, that's it for that second form of chat noun from 1530. One, idle small talk. Synonym is chatter. Two, light informal or familiar talk. Especially the synonym conversation. Three, any of several songbirds, end of sentence, and then we've got the genera names are Caro, uh, Carcomella, also Granatellus, and Icteria. Those are three kinds of genera of these songbirds called chat. Four, online discussion in a chat room, also an instance of such discussion, as in participate in computer chats. I think I must have been in either junior high or high school when this phenomenon, the internet, really like took hold uh, and chat. Yeah, I, I have a vague memory of my parents when I was maybe a junior junior high, something like that. Uh, my parents going to their friend's house and they had just gotten the internet and they were the only ones we knew who had the internet. And they, my dad was saying, yeah, we went into these these rooms. They're called chat rooms and you can talk to people. And I had this image in my head of like, 3D graphics where you could literally like go up, which is now something that we have with VR. But back then, of course, it was not possible. I had no idea. It was literally just text and that's all it was. So I think I was a little uh, unimpressed when I saw it myself. But uh, yeah, 
I was around when this stuff started and now it's exploded. Um, that's that for chat. That is that for chat. That's that for chat. Next we have Chateau, C-H-A-T-E-A-U, and there is a carrot icon, a carrot uh, accent on the first A. Chateau, noun from 1720. One, a feudal castle or fortress in France. Two, a large country house. Synonym is mansion. Three, a French vineyard estate. This is from the Latin castellum, which means fortress. Next, we have Chateaubriand. It is a one word, uh, so we added B-R-I-A-N-D to the word chateau. There's also no accent on any of the letters in this one. Chateaubriand, noun, from 1877. A large tenderloin steak, usually grilled or broiled and served with a sauce. And the example of the sauce is Bernays. This is from Francois René de Chateaubriand. That's his last name. So, I mean, it's just a steak with a sauce. Maybe the, the specific kind of sauce he put together with the steak and it became the Chateaubriand. I don't know. That would be amazing if you just made up a food and then it's just named after you forever. Okay, next we have Charlatan. No. Chatelaine. I, th- I thought read it as charlatan, but that's not it. I think we read that before. Did we read it before? Yes, I think we did. This is Chatelaine, noun from the 15th century. It is spelled C-H-A-T-E-L-A-I-N. Normally, I don't spell so many of these words, but we've had a whole bunch of French ones, and so, you know, to non-French speakers, I gotta, I gotta spell it so you know what it looks like. Noun from the 15th century, and we just have the synonym, Castellan. Yeah, I, I don't, I think it's pronounced Castellan, that other one, but I don't remember. Moving on to same pronunciation, Chatelaine, uh, we've added an E to the end of the word. Noun from 1845, 1A, the wife of a Castellan, also the mistress of a chateau. The mistress of a chateau? Is a chateau a person? I thought a chateau was a thing. How could there be a mistress of a thing? Okay, 1B, the mistress of a household or of a large establishment. So I guess mistress could also just mean like the woman who runs the whole thing. You know, she's, she's, you could say queen of the establishment, but you know, they don't use that word. Two, a clasp or hook for a watch, purse, or bunch of keys. Uh, Just a bunch of keys. It's a chatelaine. All right. Next we have chatoyance. C-H-A-T-O-Y-A-N-C-E. Chatoyance. Noun from 1910, and we just have the synonym, chatoyancy. Yep, that is our next word as well. Noun from 1894, the quality or state of being chatoyant. (laughs) Okay, that's our next word, chatoyant. We just keep on going down this rabbit hole. We've got two forms. The first form of chatoyant, adjective from 1816, having a changeable luster or color with an undulating narrow band of white light, as in a chatoyant gem. So a thing that has this uh, this look to it would be, well, so the thing is a chatoyant, but then it has chatoyancy, or it has chatoyance. Such a funny word. Uh, I think I said the example, a chatoyant gem. This is French, from the verb uh, chatoyer, which means to shine like a cat's eyes. Yes, we had cat's eye before, uh, and so that was a kind of stoner gem that has this sort of cat's eye-looking pattern to it. So, you you know, it's the same as chatoyant. And I'm guessing this must be... um, It doesn't say it here, but I think... Is the word chat, C-H-A-T, is that French for cat? I know gato is in Spanish. I think it might be. I should probably look this up, but I'm wondering if, you know... It's literally like cat eye in there. I don't know. I don't know French. Second form of chatoyant, noun from circa 1828. It is a chatoyant gem. Next is chat room. Two words, 
noun from 1986, a real-time online interactive discussion group. I don't think I was, I was born in 1980. I don't think I was six years old when my parents went in that chat room. I must have been, it must have been later. So technically it was invented back then, but I don't think most people really got this until later in the 80s, the later 80s. All right, next and last word is chat show. Two words, noun from 1969. It is chiefly British and the synonym is talk show. They call them chat shows. We call them talk shows. Okay, I got to pick one. We had chastity, chastity belt, Chazabel, chat, chateau, chateaubriand, chatelaine, chatelaine, chatoyance, chatoyancy, chatoyant, chat room, and chat show. Oh boy, I don't know what to pick. Um, uh, mm, I don't know what I like like i don't know what i like all right i'm just gonna pick chat show as the word of the episode because you know those are kind of fun shows to watch and i've seen a couple uh british chat shows and they are i think more entertaining probably than the american ones but i'd have to watch more chat show chat show we call them talk shows here in america but in england and britain and scotland and ireland they call them chat shows because they sit on couches and chat Am I really going to put this out for the world to hear? I guess so. All right. So the inner, the, the holidays, we, the big one is the International Day of Light. Also, you could call it the International Day of Living Together in Peace. There's, those are both happening, and I'm sure that they're related. So I like that. It's Remembrance Day in Finland. What else? It is uh, Martyrs of Sudan. That is uh, in the Episcopal Church in the USA. In Iraq, it is Mass Graves Day. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, all over the world, people have just been thrown in mass graves, and I don't think that's all that cool. You know, maybe maybe give them a little bit more respect, unless that they requested it. You know, if you want to be part of a mass grave, that's cool. Just got to put it in your will. But, you know, in general, I think, yeah, let's respect the people who are thrown into mass graves, because they're probably forgotten. In South Sudan, it is National Day. In Malaysia, it is Teacher's Day. It is... Oh, we have a week. Uh, May 16th through May 22nd is National EMS Week. Those are the emergency workers, so, you know, please respect your EMSers. That's not the word. Uh, All right, fun holidays for May 16th. Uh, Shuvo, I think that might be closely to how it's pronounced. It is a Jewish holiday. It's the Feast of Weeks. Jewish holiday, uh, holiday, uh, agriculturally, wheat harvest. Yeah, that stuff. And it is National Mimosa Day. Have a mimosa. I think it's a Sunday too. So, you know, mostly mimosas are drank on Sundays. And then, finally, it is National Honor Our LGBT Elders Day. And definitely those who identify as LGBTQIA, uh, I think I may have gotten all the letters. I apologize if I missed any. Um, They definitely need to show some respect to their elders who came before them and who fought, fought the hard fight to... To, to make the world that we see today, um, you know, which is not perfect, but it's so much better than it was even 20 years ago. So if you are in that world and you would like to pay some respect to your elders, uh, go do some research, talk to them, see what world the world was like that they had to grow up in. And it it was way worse. But, you know, you keep on fighting too to make it better and also not just you but people who don't identify as that also need to keep on fighting because we are all in this together and i'm not just talking about the pandemic all right we finished page page 209 thank you very much for listening if you want to go hear me um read some of these words from the indispensable dictionary of unusual words you can become a patron at five dollars or more and you will get exclusives like this but i do urge you please to you know go buy your own dictionary go buy this specific book and you can follow along i don't want this to be just like totally free out there uh you know it's not free out there but you know uh you know just go support go support the books get the real books All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information.
Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. It's my podcast. We are starting with the top of page 210. It's relatively early in the morning. So, you know, hey, let's talk like this. The first word is chattel, C-H-A-T-T-E-L, noun from the 14th century. One, an item of tangible, movable, or immovable property, except real estate and things connected with real property. With real property? What about fake property? Uh, And then the examples of other things, it says real estate and things, those are buildings. Number two. Synonyms are slave and bondman. Bondman. One word. Bondman. Uh, yeah, so this is Middle English chattel, which means property from Anglo French, and there's more at the word cattle. Next we have chatter, first form verb from the 13th century, uh, starting with intransitive. One, to utter rapid, short sounds suggestive of language but inarticulate and distinct, no, sorry, indistinct, as in, squirrels chatter, chattered angrily. I don't know, those are my squirrel sounds. Uh, Those are my my squirrel chattery sounds. They they make some very specific sounds, and I don't want to make that sound right now because I can't think of what it is. Okay, number two, to talk idly, incessantly, or fast. 3A, To click repeatedly or uncontrollably, as in teeth chattering with cold. 3b. To vibrate rapidly in cutting, as in a chattering tool. What is a chattering tool? It vibrates rapidly. Uh, I know that they exist, but I cannot think of the name of one. 3c. To vibrate especially audibly as a consequence of repeated sticking and slipping, as in chattering brakes. Those are the brakes in the car. I don't think you want them to do that. I mean, sometimes you want to vibrate them, but this shouldn't be happening when you don't want it to be happening. Okay, now we have transitive. There's just one. To utter rapidly, idly, or indistinctly. Chatterer is a noun, and uh, chattery is an adjective. Now we have the second form of chatter, noun from the 13th century. One, the action or sound of chattering. Two, idle talk. Synonym is prattle. P-R-A-T-T-L-E. Prattle and chatter. Number three, electronic and especially radio communication between individuals engaged in a common or related form of activity. Also, such chatter regarding future hostile activities. Wow, that took a turn. Next we have chatterbox, one word, noun from 1774, one who engages in much idle talk. Next is chatter mark, two words. Uh, I know somebody named Mark. He was a guest on this show uh, many, many moons ago. Uh, you can find his episode. But uh, he would he, he's a bit of a chatterer. He likes to talk, and I like to hear what he has to say. Uh, and so I just think it's funny. Chatter Mark. Okay, noun from 1888. One, a fine undulation formed on the surface of work by a chattering tool. That would be the one that we talked about earlier that vibrates rapidly in cutting. Number two, one of a series of short curved cracks on a glaciated rock surface transverse to the glacial striae. You know, people who study uh, geology and glaciers understand that. Okay, next we have chatty, C-H-A-T-T-Y, adjective from 1756, one fond of chatting. Synonym is talkative. I, I am not a, a particularly chatty person. I mean, I can be here because I have to be, uh, you know, given the right circumstances, I can. But uh, my, my, my go-to is te- I tend to uh, not talk. Uh, but, you know, if you get me talking about something that I like, you, you can't really shut me up. Um, as in, a chatty neighbor. Two, having the style and manner of light familiar conversation, as in a chatty letter. But you have to handwrite the whole thing. 
Chattily is an adverb. Chattiness is a noun. Next we have chauffeur. Chauffeur, sh- you, could, you can emphasize either syllable. Chauffeur, chauffeur. C-H-A-U-F-F-E-U-R. First form, noun from 1899. A person employed to drive a motor vehicle. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, they are chauffeurs, I guess. Uh, But I don't know if they would call themselves that. Eh, Maybe. This is French. It literally means stoker. S-T-O-K-E-R. This is from chauffeur, which means to heat. From old French chauffeur. And there's more at the word chafe. I'm not sure what this stoker thing is. I think of stoking a fire, but... I don't know, that's not really making sense in my brain. Uh, Now we have the second form of chauffeur. It is a verb from 1917. First is intransitive. To do the work of a chauffeur. Now I don't even know how to say this word anymore. Chauffeur. Chauffeur. Uh, I'll work on it. Okay, next is the, uh, the transitive definitions. One, to transport in the manner of a chauffeur. Seriously, my brain is thinking way too hard on how to say this word. As in, chauffeurs... <laughs> now it's making me crack up. Chauffeurs the children to school. Oh, yes, the parents, they do this. They drive them. They chauffeur them. Two, to operate as an automobile as chauffeur. Next is, this is a fun word, cholmugra. C-H-A-U-L-M-O-O-G-R-A. Chol- cholmugra. Noun from circa 1815, any of several East Indian trees that yield an acrid oil used especially formerly in treating leprosy and skin diseases. Uh, so it says formerly, they don't, they don't use it anymore. Uh, does that mean that they, you know, because of medical science, they've got other things to treat them? Or did it not really work? I, you know, if they used it for a while, they probably did work. The family name is Flacortiaceae. Flacortiaceae. Nah, I got it close enough. This, uh, it's Bang, B-E-N-G. Is that Bengalese? Is that short or is it just uh, Bang Bengali? There we go. Uh, this is a Bengali word. Where did it go? Uh, Kalmugra, just spelled differently. Uh although maybe they pronounce it Cholmugra, but it's spelled C-A-L-M-U-G-R-A. It is a tree. Next, we have, uh, let's see, chant? No, I guess it would say chant or chanter, but it's with a C-H-A-U. Uh, this is the archa- ar- ar- archaic variation of chant and chanter. Ch- it looks like chant and chanter. Next, we have chaussure. That's another French word. C-H-A-U-S-S-U-R-E, chaussure, noun from the 14th century. One, the synonym is footgear, which I would just call that shoes. And hey, look at that. Number number two is plural. The synonym is just shoes. So the, the plural chaussures is just shoes. Shoes, chaussures. Mm, I wonder if those are, are related. Let's look at the etymology. Middle English, chaucaire, from Anglo-French, chaussure, from Old French, chaussier, uh, which means to put on footwear, from the Latin cal- calciare, uh, which is from calcius, which means shoe, and there's more at the word calzone, which is awesome, and that does, now I'm just thinking of wearing calzones on your feet, uh, chaussure. If you want to sound super fancy, you can say, I'm leaving the house, I'm going to put on my chaussures. All right, next is our last word. It is Chautauqua. Uh, Chautauqua. I want to make sure I pronounce it correctly. It is spelled C-H-A-U-T-A-U-Q-U-A. Lots of U's and A's. Those are the only vowels. Chautauqua. Noun from 1873. Any of various traveling shows and... Oh, this is a long definition. Any of traveling various traveling shows and local assemblies that flourished in the U.S. in the late 19th and early 20th centuries that provided popular education combined with entertainment in the form of lectures, concerts, and plays, and that were modeled after activities at the Chautauqua Institution of Western New York. 
and this is from Chautauqua Lake. I'm assuming that's in western New York. Well, which one am I going to pick? So we had Chattel, Chatter, Chatterbox, Chattermark, Chatty, Chauffeur. <laughs> that's not high. Sh- chauffeur. The chauffeur. Cholmugra, Chan, 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 Chant, Chauffeur, and Chautauqua. Hmm. Well, I don't know much about this Chautauqua, and it's a uh, it's assembly, and there's shows and entertainment and lectures, lots of things. I, I like that actually. A uh, whole a whole lot of entertainment, whole lot of information. Let's pick Chautauqua as the word of the episode. Uh, so I don't know how to sing a song about Chautauqua. Chautauqua, Chautauqua, Chautauqua. You go listen to some lectures at a Chautauqua. All right, that's good enough for that. Uh, all right, let's quickly read some holidays. It is Norwegian Independence Day. It's World Telecommunication and Information Society Day. In uh, the Jewish culture religion, it is the first day of Shavuot. In Australia, National Law Week starts. Uh, Constitution Day of Norway, International Internet Day. Maybe you should get off the internet for this one day. Can we? Can we? Can you not do that? Is it possible for any of us to not use the internet for one day? In the Netherlands, it is Princess Maxima's birthday. In uh, it's World Hypertension Day. In Argentina, it's Armed Forces Day. In Spain, it is Galician Language Day. In Colombia, it is Ascension. And the European Union has Day Against Homophobia. Please, let's make this every single day, not just one day. Ay, ay, ay. Um, what else? Children's Day in Norway. Uh, oh, Canada also has National Day Against Homophobia. That's great. What about America? America, can we get on board with this? Can we at least have one day against homophobia? Ay. Uh, Navy Day in Argentina, that is all that. Fun holidays, what do we got? I think I already mentioned, uh, it's, uh, yesterday started EMS week, so I don't have to say it again, although I just did. What? It's National Walnut Day. Those are good and healthy for you. They look like brains. It is Pack Rat Day. I used to be a bit of a pack rat, but I've sort of forced myself. No, you don't need new stuff. You don't need to keep all the stuff, but I still have a lot of stuff. It's also tax day, and I think because of the pandemic, they pushed back taxes this year. So, you know, as I'm recording this on April 17th, two days ago technically was tax day, but I do think they pushed it to uh, May 17th. So if you if you owed some taxes, you had an extra month, but hey, today is the day. You didn't hear me say it before. I probably should have said it before if I knew it or thought about it, but I didn't. So you know what? Get your taxes done today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I'm not going to sing a song. I'm not going to sing a song. Okay, our first word is chauvinism. C-H-A-U-V-I-N-I-S-M. This is a big one. Okay, noun from 1851. One, excessive or blind patriotism. And it says compared to the synonym jingoism with a J. Uh, so I'm assuming that would be the opposite. I think I've heard of that word, but I wouldn't know what it was if I just saw it. Uh, so if this one is excessive or blind patriotism, then I think jingoism would be, you know, you, you probably more question question authority and you don't necessarily just go with the flow when you want to maybe, yeah, I'm not so good with the words. All right, number two, undue partiality or attachment to a group or place to which one belongs or has belonged. Number three, an attitude of superiority toward members of the opposite sex. This is the one that we think of mostly. This is terrible. And then it says also, behavior expressive of such an attitude. We we don't need this. There is no reason for this. Why are people like this? They probably honestly have some... They, they, they don't feel so good about themselves in some way. Uh, and they take it out in other ways, in bad ways. And uh, what what can we do to fix this? Let's try and fix this, because people should not be chauvinistic in any way. Um, 
let's just finish this up real quick. Uh, chauvinist is a noun or an adjective. Chauvinistic is an adjective. Chauvinist, chauvinistically, they just keep on getting longer. That is an adverb. This is, ooh, interesting. Ooh, etymology, bringing it. Uh, this is French chauvinisme, which is from Nicholas Chauvin. C-H-A-U-V-I-N. Does that name sound familiar? Nicholas Chauvin was a character noted for his excessive patriotism and devotion to Napoleon in Theodore and Hippolyte Cogniard's play Le Cocard Tricolore. Okay, so Theodore and Hippolyte, they made a play called uh, The Tricolor, The Three Color Something, and uh, this guy was a character, and he had excessive patriotism and devotion to Napoleon. So it became this word chauvinism, which then somehow became this superiority towards members of the opposite sex. Maybe he had that too as this character, but I don't know. But what I just, well, first of all, I think it's fascinating that it's named after a, 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 f a person, fictional person, but still a person. Uh, but now, you know, I'm recording this in the middle of April, and literally in three, no, two days from now, uh, they're going to start the closing arguments in the Chauvin case in Minnesota. And uh, I'm wondering if there's any sort of connection, you know, maybe not directly, but his last name is Chauvin. And, you know, he he did something that is just indescribably terrible. Uh, I don't know. I just think that's an interesting coincidence is all. All right. Let's move on to chaw, C-H-A-W, first form, verb from 1506, and we just have the number one definition for the word chew, C-H-E-W, which uh, that's at least a couple pages from now. Second form of chaw, noun from 1709, a chew, especially of tobacco. I, I have never tried that. I think it's disgusting in my eyes, and I will never try that. Next is chaw bacon. Yep, it's like chaw and bacon, one word, noun from 1537. Synonyms are bumpkin and hick. Uh, and yes, it's combining chaw and bacon. Although this is the first form of chaw, so it's like chewing. Uh, so chewing bacon, you know, it's the, I guess the idea of like, oh, those, those hicks, they just chew a lot of bacon. Although I wouldn't be surprised if the, uh, the tobacco chaw chew is part of that too. Uh, it's probably not a very nice term. Next is chayote or chiyote or chiyote. You can really just change the vowels however you want. It is spelled C-H-A-Y-O-T-E, noun from 1887. The pear-shaped fruit of a West Indian annual vine of the gourd family that is widely cultivated as a vegetable, also the plant. And it is called also, uh, let's see, how do I want to pronounce it? Chayote, chayote squash, or Christophine, or Mirliton. M-I-R-I-L-I, -I -I, no, M-I-R-L-T, what? M-I-R-L-I-T-O-N, Mirliton. Uh, this is a Spanish from the a Spanish word from the Nahuatl word, uh, chayotli. Chayotli. Okay, next is C H D, all caps, abbreviation for coronary heart disease. Something that none of us want to have, but some of us will probably have, given the current state of how we are progressing in the way we eat. Okay, next is cheap. C-H-E-A-P, first form. All the rest of the words in this episode will start with cheap. This is a noun from before the 12th century. It, it is, it's obsolete. The synonym is bargain. So that, that usage of it is obsolete. But we have a phrase, on the cheap. And that means at minimum expense. Or the synonym is cheaply. As in, did the job on the cheap because none of us want to pay many more than we have to. This is from Old English, spelled C-E-A-P. Maybe it is uh, pronounced cheap, and that means trade. It is akin to the Old High German Kauf, with a K, and that means trade, and both ultimately from the Latin Kaupo, 
which means tradesman. Next is the second form of cheap adjective from 1509. 1A, purchasable below the going price or the real value. 1B, charging or obtainable at a low price, as in a good cheap hotel. How oh, that reminds me of the line in Twin Peaks when uh, Agent Cooper, uh, what does he say? Uh, decently priced? I don't know. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it's something about going to a good, good price, a good, a good, good priced hotel. Also is in cheap tickets, but then they will probably be bad seats. 1C, depreciated in value, as by currency inflation, as in cheap dollars. 2. Gained or done with little effort, as in a cheap victory. Also, as in talk is cheap. Uh, number 3A, an inferior, no, of inferior quality or worth. Synonyms are tawdry and sleazy, as in cheap workmanship. I don't know if I would use the word sleazy in that case, but or even tawdry. But I guess, technically, in certain circumstances, you can use that. Okay, next is 3B. Contemptible because of lack of any fine, lofty, or redeeming qualities. As in, feeling cheap. Why are you feeling cheap? Uh, Next is 3C. Synonym is stingy. As in, my cheap uncle. Uh, when I was younger, I was starting to make a little money, you know, little jobs in high school and stuff, and I didn't want to spend my money. And I think sometimes I would call myself cheap or stingy, but then I realized, no, I'm just frugal. I'm just, I'm good with my money. I don't want to spend it if I don't have to. And yeah, I think I've been pretty good with money, but I can also be cheap sometimes. Number four is talking about money obtainable at a low rate of interest. Cheap is also an adverb, and cheapish is an adjective. It sounds a lot like sheepish, but it's cheapish. Uh, sheepishly, no, no, I said the wrong word. Cheapishly is an adverb, cheaply is an adverb, and cheapness is a noun. Next, we have cheapen, verb from 1562, starting with transitive. Number one is uh, archaic. We've got 1A, to ask the price of. Okay, if, you, if you're if you asking the price, you are cheapening it? Okay. Uh, I guess I guess the idea is then if, you, uh, if you're asking, you want to hopefully cheapen the price, make it lower, possibly. Uh, 1B, to bid or bargain for. Yes, you are cheapening it. 2A, to make cheap in price or value. 2B, to lower in general esteem. 2C, to make tawdry, vulgar, or inferior. And then the intransitive definition just says, to become cheap. Let's see, uh, the one, the one, number one definition uh, the, uh, has its own etymology. It is from the obsolete English word cheap, which means to price or bid for. And then there's no etymology for the rest of it. Next is cheapy, cheap with an I-E. Noun from circa 1898, one that is cheap, especially an inexpensively produced motion picture. Cheapy is also an adjective. I don't think I've heard this used about movies. It's a cheapy. Next is cheap jack. Cheap jack, one word, first form, noun from 1851, one, a haggling huckster. Two, a dealer in cheap merchandise. And yeah, this is just combining the name Jack with cheap. Cheap Jack, second form of cheap Jack, adjective from 1865. One, being inferior, cheap, or worthless. As in, cheap Jack movie companies. I bet they make some cheapies over there. Two, unscrupulously opportunistic. As in, cheap Jack speculators. Next is Cheapo, cheap with an O. That would be the name. Oh, it could be even, it could actually be the name of one of the elves in uh, that animated show Disenchantment because they all have names that end in O. Cheapo, adjective from 1967. The synonym is just cheap. 
It doesn't say which form, doesn't say anything about that. All right, next is cheap shot. Two words, noun from 1971. Cheap shot. One, an act of deliberate roughness against a defenseless opponent, especially in a contact sport, as in taking cheap shots at the quarterback. Two, a critical statement that takes unfair advantage of a known weakness of the target. Cheap shot with a hyphen is a transitive verb. And uh, which which one of these definitions would this word cheap have come from? Cheap shot, uh, it's not anything about value. Uh, I guess, I mean, I don't know. It, it seems a little bit of a stretch, but whoa, something happened outside. I got the window open. I forgot to close it before I sat down, so whatever. You might hear some noises. But yeah, it sounded like a truck bounced. I don't know. All right, cheap shot. That was cheap shot. Don't take no cheap shots. That's not a nice thing to do. Last word for this episode is cheap skate. All one word, cheap skate. Noun from 1896. They could be roller skates or ice skates that are just, you know, not made very well or they're not expensive, but that's not what it is. It's a miserly or stingy person, especially one who tries to avoid paying a fair share of costs or expenses. The guy in A Christmas Carol, is that what it's called? Yes, I think so. Uh, Whatever his name is, he's a cheapskate. He's got all the money, but he doesn't want to pay people fair. And then the ghosts come and show him the error of his ways. All right, so we had chauvinism, chaw, chaw bacon, chayote or chayote, chd, cheap, cheapin, cheapy, cheapjack, cheapo, cheap shot, and cheapskate. Well, there are definitely some good ones in here, but I think if I think I'm going to pick chauvinism as the word of the episode, not because I like it, it is because I don't like it. And I think that we really need to take a look at our society and uh, call out people who are acting this way uh, and uh, figure out why and have a conversation with them, a serious conversation, and, uh, you know, maybe see if we can change some minds because... What, what, why, 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 please, why, just tell me why, and then don't, don't do that, um, yeah, chauvinist, chauvinism, it's a bad thing, and I don't really feel like singing a song about that, because that's depressing, but maybe we can, maybe later I'll come up with a song, and to make it, um, educational, I don't know, I probably won't, I have too much to do, all right, let's read some holidays, it is May 18th, is it May 18th? Okay. It's International Museum Day. Uh, I don't know what day of the week it is, but this will probably tell me. So it's a Tuesday. Oh, you know what? I think there are a lot of uh, museums that have free days on Tuesdays. Uh, so maybe you can go to a museum. I will probably have to work. It's the second and last day of Shavuot. That's the Jewish observance. It is in Argentina, Rosette Day. In Uruguay, it is La Piedras Battle. What else? It's Victoria Day in Canada, Baltic Fleet Day in Russia. In Ukraine, Day of Remembrance of Crimean Tatar Genocide. In Haiti, it is Flag and Universities Day. In Somaliland, it says unrecognized, it's Independence Day. It's not recognized? Independence in Somaliland is not recognized? Why? In Sri Lankan Tamils, it is Mule Vaikal Remembrance Day. In Turkmenistan, it is Revival, Unity, and Poetry of Magtimguli Day. I'm sure I pronounced that incorrectly, but I, I, I said it how it's spelled. In Syria, it is Teacher's Day. In Sri Lanka, it is Victory Day. And it's World AIDS Vaccine Day. We don't have a vaccine for this, but... It's a thing that we're working on. I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about that, but hey, that's good. We need to, you know, science has really helped uh, HIV and AIDS in just the last 10, 20 years. Oh, thank you, science. All right. The fun holiday is National No Dirty Dishes Day here in the States. Uh, no dirty dishes. So what is that? Do you have to just clean them right away? But but they were dirty. Uh 
Should we click on the link and see what it says? Uh, whether you're a f- mother, father, sister, brother, or roommate, no one likes dirty dishes. That is why on May 18th, we celebrate National No Dirty Dishes Day, a holiday most likely created by an upset parent. National Do- No Dirty Dishes Day has sinks around the world rejoicing at the thought of having a light workload and a clear space on this day. Well, I know this will make my wife very, very happy. Uh, we are, Our dishwasher doesn't really work, so uh, we are the dishwashers. And it often is me, which is fine, because she does a lot more of the cooking, which is fine, because that she makes some great food, and I don't mind cleaning the dishes. I don't necessarily get them, get to them as soon as I should, but I do get that to them. So May 18th, I will make sure to get to all the dirty dishes. All right, thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Hello, word nerds. This is my podcast. All right, some of you might get that reference. The first word is cheat, C-H-E-A-T. We went from cheap to cheat. First form, uh, there's not a lot of words in this episode, but they have lots of definitions and long definitions and synonym informations. All right, so this is a verb from 1590, uh, starting with transitive one to deprive of something valuable by the use of deceit or fraud. Two, to influence or lead by deceit, trick, or artifice. Three, to elude or thwart by or as if by outwitting, as in cheat death. Nobody has ever been able to do that. Next is the intransitive definitions 1a, to practice fraud or trickery. Is it, do you, do you practice it? I mean, yes, I guess technically people do, but like in your spare time, people practice the cello. Do people practice trickery and fraud? Especially if they're a magician, they do, but I don't know. Um, I I just, it's a funny idea to me. Oh, you know, I, I just spent some time practicing fraud today. Uh, where are we? 1B, to violate rules dishonestly, as in cheat at cards. Also, Cheating on a test. Two, to be sexually unfaithful. Uh, This is usually used with the word on, as in, was cheating on his wife. Why was he doing this? This this is a a thing. Uh, Okay, number three. To position oneself defensively near a particular area in anticipation of a play in that area. What? To position oneself defensively near a particular area in anticipation of a play in that area. Cheat. Okay, there's an example. The shortstop was cheating towards second base. Oh, a play in that area. I was thinking, like, they're going to put on a show here, and I'm going to stand in this area because I want to see the show. I'm cheating, but that didn't make sense. So the shortstop was cheating towards second base. They they were leaning in that direction. They were scooting a little bit closer because something was going to happen over there. So that's cheating. Cheater is a noun. You don't want to be a cheater. Uh, synonym information. Cheat, cozen, defraud, and swindle mean to get something by dishonesty or deception. Cheat suggests using trickery that escapes observation, as in cheated me out of a dollar. Cozen, spelled C-O-Z-E-N, like dozen, but I think it's pronounced cozen. Cozen implies artful persuading or flattering to attain a thing or a purpose, as in, always able to cozen her grandfather out of a few dollars. I'm not sure if I've heard this word. Defraud stresses depriving one of his or her rights and usually connotes deliberate perversion of the truth, as in, defrauded of her inheritance by an unscrupulous lawyer. That's not nice. Swindle implies large-scale cheating by misrepresentation or abuse of confidence, as in swindled of their savings by a con artist. Oh, yeah. Well, now with with technology today and the internet and the phones, uh, there's a lot of this happening. People are constantly making spam calls to say, you know, give me some money, and it and it works a lot of times. So be very very careful about that. All right, second form of cheat, noun. Wait, was there any etymology? 
It's from the second form of cheat, so let's read that. Second form of cheat, noun from 1615, one, the act or an instance of fraudulently deceiving. Synonyms are deception and fraud. Two, one, the cheats. Synonyms are pretender and deceiver. Three, three, sorry, that has its own etymology, which we will get to. Uh, 3A, the synonym, is, oh, it's the, 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 the number one definition for the word chess. Yeah, sometimes I have a, a little bit of a stutter. It's very minor, but sometimes words don't come out. Uh, so the first form of the word, or the first definition of the word chess can also be cheat. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get to chess. Uh, not all that long from now. Uh, and then 3B, synonym is cheat grass. So what is the etymology for number three says? Probably from a deceptive resemblance to grain. Grain, G-R-A-I-N. Like the grain that you eat, that you put in the things and the food? Okay. Number four, the obtaining of property from another by an intern intentional active distortion of the truth. Now let's go back to the all the etymology. Uh, it says earlier cheat forfeited property. Earlier cheat, what does that mean? Earlier, well, I guess cheat just means forfeited property from the Middle English chet or cheat, which means escheat or escheat, E-S. It's cheat with the with E-S at the beginning, escheat, uh, which is short for eschet, and there's more at the word escheat. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it is a word that we will get to in the E's. Uh, then that's that. For, okay, well, next is cheat grass. That was one of the synonyms for number three. Noun from 1866, an annual weedy Eurasian brom grass naturalized in North America. And the scientific name is Bromus tectorum. Next is cheat sheet. Two words. Noun from circa 1935. One, a sheet containing information used secretly for cheating. And uh, as test answers, that's that's the information that it contains. Uh, number two, a written or graphic aid as a sheet of notes that can be referred to for help in understanding or remembering something complex. Uh, yeah, it's a good sheet sheet. Like a uh, first thing I can think of is at a restaurant. If they got a bunch of sandwiches, there might be a list of uh, paper posted that just says all the ingredients of the, each, each sandwich. So you got that cheat sheet. You don't have to memorize it. Um, cheat sheet, uh, you know, for test taking, it's often, you know, on the sly, but sometimes teachers will let people make a cheat sheet. They'll say, you know, as much information as you can put on this three by five note card, you can, you, you can use that. Uh, I, I've heard of people getting real clever. Uh, well, for one, you know, the smaller you can write, the more information you can put on there. But also I saw an example of somebody where they wrote, they filled the card with something in blue ink, and then they filled the the card right over top the blue ink with something in red ink. And then I think they used the those three D glasses, the cyan and red, blue and red uh, lenses. And when you put on the blue ones, you just see the blue. And when you put on the red side, you just see the red. And so they literally got twice as much information in the same amount of space. And I thought that was super clever. All right. Next is our last word. It's check, C-H-E-C-K. It's the first form. We'll get to the second and third forms in the next episode. There's a bunch of definitions here. Let's get to it. All right. This is a noun from the 15th century. One, exposure of a chess king to an attack from which he must be protected or moved to safety. Yeah, when you get there, you're about to about to take the king, and you you say check, and then you get the other person has to move the king to a safe space, safe space. But then you know they're probably just gonna check you again, right? Two a a sudden stoppage of a forward course or progress. Synonym is arrest. Two b a checking of an opposed player, as in ice hockey. Well, yeah, that's the same thing, a sudden stoppage of a forward uh, a forward course. They got checked. That's why they're both under number two. And here we go with number three. 
a sudden pause or break in a progression. Number four is archaic synonyms are reprimand and rebuke. Five, one that arrests, limits, or restrains. And the synonym is restraint, as in, against all checks, rebukes, and manners, I must advance. I did not make that up. It's a quote from Shakespeare. Against all checks, rebukes, and manners, I must advance. 6a, a standard for testing and evaluation. Synonym is criterion. 6b, synonym is examination, as in a quick check of the engine. 6c, synonyms are inspection and investigation, as in a loyalty check on government employees to make sure they are loyal to the government. 6d, the act of testing or verifying. Also, the sample or unit used for testing or verifying. We got to check this thing against the check. 7. A written order directing a bank to pay money as instructed. I never really thought about a check being used that way. You're, you're directing a bank. I am instructing the bank to give you money at a later date. Uh, and then the synonym for that is draft. 8a, a ticket or token showing ownership or identity or indicating payment made, as in a baggage check. 8b, a counter in various games. 8c, a slip indicating the amount due. Synonym is bill. 9, nah, has its own etymology. 9a, a pattern in squares that resembles a checkerboard. And 9b, a fabric woven or printed with such a design, a check pattern. Uh, let's look at the etymology for this one. Uh, it's from Middle English check without the c at the end. Uh, it is short for checker uh, without the c, which is checker. Checker, check. It's a checkerboard pattern. Checkerboard, checker, and then check. It just got shortened to check. All right. We talked about that enough. Number 10. Uh, a mark typically, and then it shows a check mark, placed beside an item to show it has been noted, examined, or verified. Sometimes you just call a check mark a check. And 11 synonyms are crack and break. Checklist is an adjective. And then there's a phrase in check. It's a sh very short phrase. Under restraint or control, as in trying to keep his emotions in check. Uh, let's see, any etymology? Oh, this is interesting. So, Middle English, check, without this C at the end. From Anglo-French, S check, with an ES at the beginning. From Arabic, uh, Shah, that just says Shah. Uh, from the Persian word, uh, maybe that's also Shah, which literally means king. That must be related to uh, check, uh, chess, which is interesting. Akin to the Greek word, uh, how do you say this? Katasthai, and that means to acquire, from the Sanskrit word kasatra, which means dominion. I am super fascinated by all of these languages that are theoretically connected to the word Czech, but their definitions don't really seem like they would be. I don't know. The king one, though, that one was really interesting. Uh, I, I guess that w if you're playing chess and you, you check the king, you're basically saying king <laughs> like look there's a king i got the king or i'm about to get the king but i don't know but but also it's interesting because it's also very much related to the stoppage of forward course or you know arresting stopping the king i don't know that was fascinating all right uh okay so we had cheat cheat grass cheat sheet and check i am going to pick cheat sheet as the word of the episode because uh, you know, I'm not so good at the memorizing things, so I love to have the cheat sheet there in front of me to help me remember if I, if I happen to be working in a restaurant. Well, I did work in a little cafe once, so I think I did have those cheat sheets for, for making things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, those are very helpful. Uh, and then eventually you, you make it enough and then you just start to memorize it. Um, 
cheat sheet. You'd need a cheat sheet if you're gonna make some cocktails or some sandwiches. You need a cheat sheet. That was fine, 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 fine. All right, what are our holidays for today? I forgot to uh, click on the next page. What are we, May 19th? What? There's no major holidays or observances in the United States for this date? I find that hard to believe. We'll check the other page. But in France, it is Day of Nature. I think we could use that as well. We were were just with a couple of people walking through some nature uh, yesterday, and um, we were talking about what is the the idea of um, tree bathing. I think it's in Japan, and, uh, you know, it's being out in nature and... Uh, yeah, it just, it's really, really helpful. I, I had a stressful day of work and at the end of the day, we were walking around, we were walking on the beach and there were some trees and other things and it really, it really did help. Um, yeah, so go be in nature if you can. Uh, touch some trees, smell some trees, get the oxygen, sit there for five minutes, it'll help. All right, what other holidays do we got? Well, here, it there is a thing in the U.S. It's Hepatitis Testing Day. It's also uh, National Asian and Pacific Islander HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Uh, it's also Malcolm X Day. Ooh, was it his birthday? Uh, yes, May 19th was Malcolm X's birthday. So uh, go learn more about Malcolm X. In Kyrgyzstan, it's Mother's Day. In Vietnam, it is Ho Chi Minh's birthday. In Greece... It is the Greek Genocide Remembrance Day. In Turkey and North Cyprus, it is commemoration of Atur, At- Atatürk. Atatürk. Yeah, Atatürk. Uh, Atatürk Youth and Sports Day. And that is all for that. Uh, all right, what is the fun holiday? Oh, it's National Devil's Food Cake Day. So go see if you can find some Devil's Food Cake and sit in nature in France. All right. Thank you very much for listening to this. Uh, This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.